It's a beast in this motherfucker. You can feel the energy. Somehow this nigga owns some wild, crazy shit. When two cultures collide, which yeah. one will stand yeah. to liberate the black community? Zero. First of all, I need to acknowledge Side why this TV. debate is necessary. Black News 102. Whose words will survive when we purge the lies? That curse the divine, cast the pearls to swine. Reverse the design, even merge divide. Side that a TV when two worlds collide. Might hurt to decide just who verbs will vibe. When we curve all the job, whether girls or guys. No herbs left alive in this earthly skies. Side at a TV when two worlds collide. Clash of the titans. Facts will enlighten. Some spitting mad, but they ain't happy. As exciting, uh, this platform we battle for the souls of man. man. Those kidnapped and trapped upon stolen land. Doesn't matter where you at on this earth. Africa's the true origin of your birth. Teaching you true health and wealth. Knowledge and self worth instead of killing your health, going to jail over turf. We all truth seekers asking questions. Should we seek them in the shrine lodge or the lessons? Or, Is the answer ancestral science or religion? Or, Is it freedom or will he let a little difference? Is it Indian, Aboriginal, Indigenous people? Should we worship? Money is it still a root or evil? We all born with mental shackles if we black. Oh. And the only thing that's gonna free us is the actual facts. Whose words will survive when we purge the lies? That curse the divine, cast the pearls to swine. Reverse the design, even merge divide. Side that a TV when two worlds collide. Might hurt to decide just who verbs will vibe. When we curve all the job, whether girls or guys. No herbs left alive in this earthly skies. Side at a TV when two worlds collide. Is it the gods and herbs or the moors? Should we master UCC and commercial law? Is it being Muslim, Christians, or the Jews? Should we push the old school and need something new? Is it atheism, Egyptologists, Hebrew Israelites, flat earthers, herbalists? To get our people right, I'm in Rod Squad, RBG, your new covenant. Should we work for it? Should we overthrow the government? Should we all go for self being savages and vultures? Pan African or is hip hop our culture? Is it nationality? Or correct status Should we integrate me to a Black Lives Matter Should we hit the streets with the Panthers Unify the gangs It's all out war the right answer Are we Asiatic or Arabian Should we just free Dr. York and be New Wapi and Asabian Whose words will survive when we purge the lies That curse the divine cast the pearls to swine Reverse the design even merge divide Side that a TV when two worlds collide Might hurt to decide just who verbs will vibe when we curve all the job, whether girls or guys, no herbs left alive in this earthly skies. Side at a TV when two worlds collide. <coughs> all right, all right, man. That's what I'm talking about. Peace and Black Power family. Y'all are in for. Um, a real good, good, good battle tonight because we got Elder Yara, who was definitely a former opponent, and Chris Harris. These two brothers have much respect for one another. They've been debating for a long time, so don't think this is their first debate. Um, this is going to be one that y'all don't want to miss. Elder Yara, Chris Harris. Chris Harris is now, um, he's no longer an Israelite. So Elder Yara, I don't know how you're going to take this, but um, this is going to be good right now. I'm going to give each of you brothers time to open up, let the people know what it is, plant the seed, let them know what it is that you came here to do, Elder Yara. I will pass the mic to you. First of all, shout out Judah Nazareth. Judah Naz, you probably didn't know, but you was doing battle with my cousin, man. <laughs> that was my cousin going back and forth at you, Judah Naz, on the screen earlier of uh, Shaft. So, brother Elder Yara. You got the floor. Set the tone. Let the people know what it is that you came here to do tonight, brother. I came here to crack his skull. Mm. That's it. Oh, shit. Elder, y'all right, just go right to the point. Chris Harris, take advantage of this. Plant the seed. You know, you got to paint the picture. Let the people know what you are here today to do and to prove. You got the floor. Two All minutes. Right. All right, thank you. So peace to the HOK audience. And what I'm here to do uh, today to do is simply prove that there were no Israelites on the slave ships. Um, the Israelites or the Hebrew Israelites over here in America, they draw a lot of their conclusions from Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, 
books such as uh, Babylon of Timbuktu, which there's a lot of information in there where there's a lot of misinformation in this book. The book by Joseph J. Williams, Hebrewisms of West Africa, in which he was nothing more than an American Jesuit missionary who himself never traveled to West Africa. Uh, Joseph J. Williams was also someone, a proponent of the so-called hermetic hypothesis. And part of the hermetic hypothesis, which people have to understand, is the hermetic hypothesis teaches that nothing of any value ever came into Africa except for by way of the Hamites. They teach that Hamites gave Africa all of its so-called culture. That is part of the Hermetic hypothesis. Um, I also want to show that Elder Yara today has to show Israelites on the boat. My position is no, there were no Israelites on the boat because there was no Israelite nation on the west coast of Africa. Um, hmm. They also draw a lot of their inferences from their belief that they are the Hebrew Israelites. Here's what I'm saying in my five minutes of time. When you continue to support this Hebrew Israelite narrative, it is, in fact, nothing more than a um, pseudo black um, revisionist uh, methodology upon African um, African culture, African history and our African ancestors slash people. All right. Wanna... Thank you. It's okay. two minutes to open up. Not five, brother. Oh, <laughs> OK. <laughs> All, right. All right. So Sounds thank like you. Go. Um, Which one of you brothers choose to go first? Y'all work that out. Go ahead. Yara, right, you go first. You the pro. All right. Yeah, Yara, right. you the challenger. You go first. Elder Yara right, is here. Do y'all have any um, disagreements with the title? We got um, Elder Yara right versus Chris Harris. Is there evidence of Israelites' kingdom on the coast of West Africa? That's all I can put on there for right now. So let's get it in. My brother Yara, right, I'm giving you 10 minutes. Even if you don't use all the 10 minutes, well, I'm going to keep it there. I thought this was about Israelites being on the boat. I think even um, Yara would prove. I mean, he can he can change it to whatever he wants. I mean, yeah, he yeah, us, Israelite, he yes, yeah. Um, West oh, Africa. Yes, oh, I got you. Okay. All right. Remember, I told you to text me the title, Chris. I told yeah, you. Yeah, it's fine. We I mean, it was Yara's challenge. Me and him spoke on it, and we. Yeah, I don't debate we, titles, so we. Yeah, we, we, um, we had a conversation. Yeah. His premise is, as he stated, there's no Israelites. All right, I'll add the boat. Don't worry about it. Well, as y'all get it in, yeah. I will add all of that. Okay, so yeah. I'm about to run upstairs and um, just get me some water right quick. And um, y'all, right, you can start. I'm not trying to um, disrespect you. No, it's all good. Take your turn. Okay. Nah, I think you should wait till he get back so you can hear what he say. Okay. You don't want him to say things that you don't One know. One second. Go. Go ahead, brother. We got you. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, you know, uh, we just, I'll just based on what he just, what he just talked about, uh, listen to understand what he said, family. Uh, number one, that there's no, there were no Israelite kingdoms on the west coast of Africa. That's number one. Are you starting now, Yara? Uh, I could start now. I don't matter. He could wait till I, I can wait till he comes back. Yeah, wait till he come back, cause I'm yeah. gonna start the clock. Yeah, it don't matter. Just when I, when you start the clock, so I just, I'm sharing my screen. Yes. I don't have a lot. Of, yeah, I'm not doing it now. I wait till you come back, Chris. I don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of. I don't have a lot of slides. All right, let's get this on in here. Sorry about okay, that. Okay, Elder Yara, mm -hmm. the time will start when you're ready. Share your screen. You got 10 minutes. And um, when two worlds collide, family, the clock, what's going to happen? We're going to find out right now. When two worlds collide. All right. I want Judah Naz to put in the um chat who it is that you would like to take on, Judah Naz. And I try to make that happen. So I see your screen. See my screen your screen is sharing. is sharing. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. All right. Your 10 minutes starts. And for any any reason that you need me to hold your time, you got to tell me. Yo, sir, stop my time for a minute. I got to get this. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So, all right. Your time starts, brother. Yeah, exactly. So, again, let's get it. So we heard Chris's print lay his premise out. There were no Israelite kingdoms on the west coast of Africa, uh, number one, number two. There were no Israelites on the slave ships. So let's get it right um, here. Uh, reclaiming Africa. Uh, if anybody wants to know, this is a series that I run uh, respectfully on my channel. Uh, so you're just going to get a glimpse of it here. Um, so let's deal with it. You know, skip that. We don't need that. Uh, evidence of Israelites in America. Now, here's what we have to understand, people. The only way that anyone from the ancient Near East whether on the west coast of Africa 
uh, whether they uh, uh, in, in the Levant area, the only way to get to the Americas is on a ship, right? This is not planes, trains, and automobiles. The only way you can get here is on a boat. And the only record that we have historically of any people from the West Coast of Africa or the continent of Africa coming over to the Americas from the period of, uh, of, of, of before 1492, well into the 1800s, right, during the time of the transatlantic slave trade is by ship. That's it, family. We can go to the uh, uh, slave voyages. That's well documented. We don't even have to go into that. That's minutia to deal with. But let's see what the experts in Sarnetta has to agree with. Uh, fair use, Sarnetta. Want me to stop your time? We can't hear it. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Can you hear it now? No, we can't hear the video. Can you hear it now? No. All right, you're at 807. I stopped your time at 807. It's playing for me. You can't hear it at all? No. Can you hear it, Chris? No, sir. Can't no. hear it at all. You can't hear it at all? Yeah, this is oh, a pretty man. good source, huh? Yeah, it's a great source. Wow. Um. Let's Dang. go to your, it's on your video. This is Dr. Dana Marnici, right? Well, real quick, Yara, um, hey, Sonetta, hit pause. Yara, go into your microphone. Turn on your microphone on the stream yard. On the stream yard? Okay. Yeah, go to um, settings. Yeah, the time stopped. Don't worry about it. Okay. So go on to the microphone. Settings, good. Go to audio. Audio. All right. Um, go to default microphone. Go to default microphone. This one right here? Yes, sir. All right. All right. There you go. All right. Let's try it. Appreciate you, fam. Let's see if that does it. Yeah, maybe you could go easy on me in this debate now. Uh, let's see. Let's try it again. Let me know if you can hear it now, Sonetta. No. I can't. I don't know what's going on then. Good luck. Okay. You can't hear it at all? No. All right. Hold my time. Hold my time. Hold my time. Yeah, I got time. it. Maybe JJ need to call in and tell you how to do it. Come on, JJ. Because I can't, I can't. It ain't playing at all? No. No. All right. Well, I'll come back to it. Let's deal with this, right? Uh, so he said that there were no black king, there were no kingdoms, black kingdoms of uh, uh, Israelites on the west coast of Africa. All right. right time resume. It's eight oh seven. I'm gonna start the time. Okay. So resume the time. So black Jews in the west coast of Africa, right? So let's deal with it, right? Uh, so here's the source: the Atlantic slave trade from Angola, a port by port estimate slave trades in Bark 1701, 1867. You clearly see here. Uh, it says here in this source, the present estimates place the uh, participation of each port of embarkation in the Angolian slave trade. In comparative perspective, figure one shows that despite the large numbers of captive ships from Luanda and Bengala, the ports from Luando played source of slaves on the coast outside Portuguese control. African merchants dominated this source uh, dominated. This Pause story. for one minute, brother. Pause for one minute. Okay. Um, All right. Go ahead, Nepal. Go ahead, Nepal. Yeah, you could have said it, but Yara, when you go to share your screen, there's a little box on the lower left-hand side at the uh -huh. bottom. It says share audio. You have to check the box. Okay, well, it says share my screen. And then it says share audio at the bottom on the lower left or something. It's a check that box. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Okay. Let me see. Go out of here again and start it all over. Yeah, when you say share screen. Share screen. Okay. Right. Yeah, do right. it over there. Right. Do you see where it says share audio? You got to check the box. Uh, um, okay, right here. Okay, right here. Audio. Audio. I don't even see it. Let me share. Let me share. Let me share. 
So share screen. So share screen. Share system. Yes, yeah. yeah, check that box. Okay. See if that works. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully that works. All right, peace. Thank you, Jane. Appreciate it. Let's see if that works. Uh, here we go. Atlantic slave trade. Let's just now? start there. Okay, there you go. Now you got it. All right, I'm going to take it all the way back to 807. Starting right. back from there. All right, go ahead, right. brother. Appreciate it. Resume. Let's go. Where you want to go at? All right, I'm going to play it right now. All right, time starts. The slave trade. Let's just start there because it's been a whole argument about Israelites did not come over here on the slave trip. So according to your understanding and your knowledge and information, um, would you say there were Israelites also on the slave ship that came over here? The people in West Africa that came over here, the Songhai, Sonic people, Man, Bamba, and several other people related to them, Sarah Cole, Jahank, Jalonk, um, Nawa, and, uh, you know, Several other, actually, dozens of other people came to uh, America. Those people are the ones that were claimed by medieval sources to be Jewish, and whose sources, like the Tariq Al Fatach and Tariq Al Sudan, say that they came, they originated from Tiras and Kur uh, and Harun, who are Aaron, Jethro and horror in the Bible. The Levites, Levitic people, not just Judean people, but the Levitic priesthood. Um, so now, if I had heard something like this previously, uh, I would have just, again, scoffed it off and said, well, you know, these, all these African-Americans claiming to be Jews and all that kind of stuff. I mean, they're just being, you know, nationals, nationalistic, and want to make themselves feel good. That's what you know. People think, uh, you know, when you say that. But the fact is that there were people that were considered Jews in the medieval period that came to America as slaves, and they were probably in the millions. Atlantic slave trade. Let's just start there because now I'm going to end the video there. Here we have right here from <clears throat> as a source. Dr. Dana Marni, uh, Reynolds Marnici, with her work, extensive work, professor at the University of Chicago, prestigious university, world-renowned professor, clearly stating peer-reviewed work that the Israelites from the west coast of Africa, right, came over on the slave ships. That's one source, right, that we have right here on our very own Sadnetta TV. Shout out to Sadnetta TV for this source. Right now, let's go into the source here. Right, I'm not gonna deal with the DNA, we're gonna deal with it here. Right, several sources. Um, this is from Historia de Loango, the Congo, the Etoharias, Romans, the Africa, Parham Labor, published uh, 1776. Europeans knew that us Congolese and Bantu people were the actual descendants of the ancient Israelites. Now, let's talk about those coming over here on the slave ships. Chris has to answer these specific questions, these sources. He has to challenge them. He has to show where they've been broken down and dismissed. Dr. A uh, uh, Alan Howard Godby, the source Black Jews, the religious challenge of politics versus religion. Cambridge University, 1987, page 235 to 236. The study of customs and rights and the analysis of the semantics of these African tribes have led many of their observers to propose some hypothesis and even draw some conclusions. That's the operative word, conclusions. Dr. Alan H. Godby reached the following conclusion, not hypothesis, conclusion. These factors have a very specific significance if we consider the presence of Judaism among the American Negro. Hundreds of thousands of slaves were transported to America. How were they transported, Chris? 
on sl on slave ships, not by bus, not by train, not by plane, but on slave ships, right, to America from West Africa during the trade, which started some 400 years ago. What traces of Judaism still remain among the Negroes of West Africa at that period? To the extent that they were per persecuted, they more than likely than other Negroes to be seized during wars and sold as slaves. Next slide. It is virtually certain that many part Jewish Negroes were among those sent as slaves to America. This is his conclusion, not his hypothesis. How many of them would have been able to conserve some Jewish customs in another question is another question. This conclusion put forward by Godby, which argues for the existence of a more or less recurrent Judaism in West Africa, in the same places as those from which the Negroes were taken, is shared by others such as Maurice Delafuse, right? But most significantly, it has been adopted by a class of educated black Americans as a key argument to demonstrate that the Jewish religion is the traditional religion of Africans bought in slavery to the American continent. Next slide. Right. This is uh, Alan H. Gabi from the Lost Tribes of Myth. Dr. Alan H. Gabi postulates the same thing. If you want to go into the actual book written by him, here it is right here. Get the direct quote. Dr. Alan H. Gabi postulates the position that black Jews were on the West on the West African coast from Senegal to Angola. And they the Jews were driven to this area from the central Sudan by Muslim propagandists having a knowledge of the black Jews in the United States. Dr. Garby arrived at this conclusion. Again, these facts have procured significance that the presence of Judaism among American Israels is to be considered hundreds of thousands of slaves were bought to the Americas. Let's continue. Uh, here's another source, Black Jews and Religious Challenge or Politics versus Religion, Ulysses Santa Maria. Uh, you guys see the source here. Let's read it. It is well known that 1500 years before Islam, Judaism was present in Africa. Travelers' tales and stories of journeys across Africa, the Sahara, the Sudan provide considerable evidence of the existence of Jewish communities on the African continent. We know that from the time of St. Jerome, a chain of Jewish commercial towns stretched almost uninterrupted from Mauritania to India. St. Augustine learned Hebrew and Tasm, where there was a Judo Syrian colony that came from uh, Caesarea uh, uh, Renica. These groups was by far as a, a core in the Southern Sahara. And according to the Chronicles of Sudan, the dynasty of the Kings of Ghana, in West Africa originated in this group. Jewish contacts and influence with black America were also noted by Arab geographers, Ibn Karib and El Bakari, who uh, stated that the routes of transatlantic slave trading with Jews, caravans and interruptions uh, were culminated in Ghana. Here, uh, in southern Nigeria, the natives called black Jews the strange people or the emo yo kwam. This is the source I gave Chris to try to beat up tonight. Let's see what he does with it. They are called the Bene Ephraim, the sons of Ephraim. They claim that their ancestors came from Morocco and is supported by Godby. One minute, one minute. They noted that their language is a mixture of Maghreban, Arab, and ancient Hebrew, right? Let's continue. Uh, let's go down here. The study of customs and rights analysis of semantics here. These factors have a very significant, significant influence. We consider the presence of Judaism among the American Negroes, right? Let's continue, uh, down here a little bit. Let's go further. Carl Peters, in the same source, founder of German East Africa, he states that even the Jews came up with the same kind of co uh, comment as in the case of Sidney Millicent, the mining magnate who wrote the essay Judea Semantic Legends and Customs Among South African Natives, which was published in the Journal of the African Society. He noted that often in the mines he had seen in the great sea of black faces, men of such unmistakable Jewish caste features that I have almost felt inclined to greet them as strangers. So what do we know, family? We know that they had kingdoms on the west coast of Africa, right? Uh, we also have a source that talks about uh, here. Uh, this source here, uh, a mission to Gala, King Dahomey. Uh, they're like the 115 towns of the tribe of Judah. Upon the <laughs> of but we do know that on the west coast of Africa, they had a kingdom filled with 115 Israelite towns, Jewish Judean towns. We know that from several different sources you've seen this evening already, right off the bat, this debate is really over, that <laughs> we have Israelites going from the West Coast of Africa over to the Americas. All right. Thank you, my brother. Um, we're going over to you, Chris. Ten minutes will start. When you start, you already know what it is. 
Okay, so my question real quick is, do we go into the rebuttal or we go straight? Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. You got um two minutes to rebuttal first. You got two okay. minutes for your rebuttal. And then you could go into your um your round. Okay. Well, first of all, I want the audience to let um let everybody hear what he just did. He's showing you Judaism. He's not showing you Israelites on the west coast of Africa. He's showing you Judaism. See, this becomes a very semantical argument, which I knew he was going to try to make by showing all these different authors speaking about Judaism and Jews. I'm not saying Jews were not on the west coast of Africa. We know Jews were on the west coast of Africa because they were converts into the religion of Judaism as early as the 14th century CE all the way to 1615 when the Portuguese set up trade routes along the west coast of um, um the west coast of Africa. I'm going to be dealing with this since he brought it up the kingdom of Judah on the west coast of Africa and I'm going to be showing you guys um, what that was really about. So what we heard here was he didn't show you um, Israelites on the West Coast of Africa. He's showing you Judaic practices on the West Coast of Africa. And I hope that he would not do this. He also mentioned slavevoyages.org in which I will be going to and debunking those names today on there. Yara, I'm really a big fan of Cardi Frames. You know that I'm from Detroit. You buffed up tonight, but you finna get beat up for the rest of this debate, my beloved brother. All right, so is my two minutes up, Sarnetta? No, sir, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. So one more time, Yara, I think you're misunderstanding something here. I wanna do a quick present uh, screen share here, and you're already failing to do this. And this is part of a scientific method called anthropology here. Now, in an introduction to anthropology, this is at the University of Toronto here, it says anthropologists use scientific and subjective interpreted methods in their research. That's what you are giving to us, interpreted methods in your research. As scientists, anthropologists systemically collect All right, you can go continue into your round. Okay, thank you. They also document their work so researchers can duplicate it. But many of the anthropologists also conduct informal kinds of research, including impromptu discussions with and observations of peoples they study. Watch this. Some of the more common types of anthropological research methods include, one, immersion in a culture, analysis of how people interact with their environment, linguistic analysis, archaeological analysis, and the analysis on human biology. So what I'm stating here by showing this is you could win this easy by showing me linguistically what language did the people on the West Coast of Africa speak? Did they speak a Semitic language? Where were their Torahs? Where were their myth what were their mythological traditions? What were their cosmological traditions? You should be able to yield all of that in your research. Were any of those people that you presented peer reviewed? You prevented, you showed a young woman on here on Sonetta's channel, and she clearly sat up there and said that you guys are just looking for some type of identity. And she admitted Jews probably were on that boat. Yes, we know Jews were on the boat. They were converts converts to the Judaic faith because of the Portuguese that were in West Africa. She did not say that they were Israelites. And you guys are getting this word Jew and Israelite confused. Let me show you something real quick, um, um, Yara. Sa, um, Sa, Sa, can you stop my time real quick so I can pull up my screen share here? Because we're Time gonna start is 8.39. Will you stop oh, that? Okay, thank you. Let me uh, just pull this up real quick because I wasn't able to get it up real fast. I got cut off. We should have agreed to maybe a 10 minute uh, start, but sorry about that guys. Um, I'm gonna pull this up here. Now, this is a um, presentation. Let me let me get ready to pull this up. Let me know when you're ready. I'll start all right, the time. All right. Thank you, HOK audience. Um, present. No huddle offense. Bill Walsh, greatest coach of all time. You know it. I, I'll debate it. I'll debate it with anybody. All right. 
So we're going to be dealing with um, one of the conclusions that like started right now, Sarnetta, excuse me. We're going to be dealing with one of the conclusions that these are one of the inferences that these gentlemen like to draw from. And this is the kingdom of Judah from a map written by Emmanuel Bowen. When I was an Israelite, this is one of the this is where I used to go to try to prove that Jews were in Africa. And this is what um, he means when he's talking about the Yoruba people who are not Jews. The argument with the Yoruba people are simply when did they convert? No one knows when they convert bird it right but let's continue on so i want to start this off now the claim by the hebrew israelites as they championed the above image is judah which was renamed by weda by european settlers but is low is this correct the short answer is a resounding no this claim is based on the ignorance what is now known as loan words in language our more astute readers may notice how the name judah which is not how the word Judah that the children of Israel Israel formerly had as their kingdom is normally spelled. It was called by the name Weda on the map. The people of this kingdom in modern day Benin actually called their land Zuida. The multiple pronunciations of Hueda, Weda, Uida, Weda, and yes, Judah is an angelicized version of the form of the actual name of the kingdom. Now, I hope you guys understand what I mean to angelicize because I want to speed this up. When you have languages, languages have a habit of transforming foreign names into something equivalent in their system of speech. And actually, it wasn't even called Zwida. That's what the Yoruba called it, right? It was actually called Gui Hu. That is the correct term of the West Coast of Africa where this settlement was at, all right? And you did not show us Judah, Levi, Benjamin, Ephraim. You didn't show us any of that. But let's stay on point here. So when you're using loan words, a Spanish word such as Juan becomes like Juan becomes John, Marcus Antonius becomes Mark Anthony, and so on. Now, I want to deal with this right here. The kingdom of Weda on the west coast of Africa, the boundaries of the modern day Benin, it was conquered by the Akwamu, one of the Akan people. It was a major slave trading post in 1700. It had a coastline around 10 miles. Let's move down. Oweda, also called Weda or Judah or Judea by the French. And you know I you're not sharing your screen, right? I'm not sharing it. No, sir. I thought I was. I had. I thought I had the share open. Yeah, but then it went off. You can go back. I bring the clock back a couple. Oh man, come on, man. We That's why I'm looking in your eyes and I see the reflection. So oh, I know man. you're reading something. Man, this is getting bad. Come on, man, Chris. You better than this. Can everybody? I'll see bring this? it back. I'll bring it. I'll bring it back some. Where did um where did I left you off at again? I said it was um, what? It was you said it was like eight minutes. Is that okay, Yara? Is it okay? Okay, yes. I'm gonna bring it back to the eight minutes, brother, so you can um so you can get your time. We don't want to cheat nobody here. And you okay. got eight minutes, Chris. Remember when you said stop, hold the time, saw? That's when you went off. I thought oh, you was man. getting something else. No, no, no. I thought everybody see it. I'm just talking and talking and talking because I want to deal with this Judah thing, this misconception that there were Israelites. Okay, like, you got eight minutes. Your time is starting. Okay. So it was actually called the uh, nation of Guihu, and I will get that source before this debate is over. All right. Now, the name Weda is once again an angelicized verm, work form of the word Zwida from the Yoruba language in Benin. And they spoke what you would call a Twi language, not a Semitic language. It is actually a Niger Congo language of the Niger Congo language family. Now, when the Portuguese first settled on the coast of West Africa, there go those Portuguese. They spelled the name Akjuda. Today, the port of of Oweida in the far west former Popo Kingdom where most of the European slave traders lived and worked bears the kingdom's name. All right, let's keep going. That's a dagger. So I want to deal with the religious rights of uh, Judah or Weida or whatever it is that you're trying to revision and call it. Now, the chief center of serpent worship was in Dahomey, which you mentioned. But the cult of the python seems to have been of exotic origin dating back to the first quarter of the 17th century. By the conquest of Weta by the Dahomeans, which you mentioned all of a sudden that they were Jews, Dahomean people have no stories about that. You got to show it, not me. You have to prove it. You have to prove it. You're the pro in the debate. It says the Dahomeans were brought in contact with a people of serpent worships, worshippers and ended by adopting from them beliefs which they first despised. At Weta, the chief center, there is a serpent temple tenanated by some 50 snakes. So they're worshiping a snake deity. 
And at WIDA, let me continue on. Every python of the Dangambi kind must be, be treated with respect, and death is the penalty for killing one, even by accident. Dangambi has numerous wives who, until 1857, took part in public procession with uh, the profane crowd was excluded. A python was carried around the town in a hammock, perhaps as a ceremony for the expulsion of evils. The rainbow god of the Ashanti, or Asante, because it's not called Ashanti, y'all like to play with that too, was also conceived to have the form of a snake. So here it is, they're worshiping the snake. Now I want to read this real quick because you guys like to say that this is the kingdom of Judah. And as a matter of fact, you aren't saying anything. What you are doing is throwing so many sources at me that you know I can't answer all of them. So I'm going to have to deal with, have a more centralized argument. And this is what I'm trying to tell the people. I think I can ask for an extra round. I'm pretty sure Yara would want that. But it says, King Hafan's rise to power in 1708. That was the king of Judah. He was the king of Judah. And this is what happens. The French company of the Indies presented Hafan with two ships worth of cargo and ex an extravagant Louis, excuse me, Louis style throne, while the British Royal African Company gifted a crown for the newly appointed king. Such practices illustrate the high level of dependence European traders had on African native powers in the beginning of the 18th century and also the close relationship that emerged between the two entities. Now, this is funny. The association is further reiterated by the fact that the palace in the city of Savi, these compounds served as important centers of diplomatic and commercial exchange between European companies and the kingdom of Wida. So the king of this so-called kingdom of Judah that you have, he's working with the powers. And as a matter of fact, we're going to learn later on in this debate that he, in fact, enslaved and was selling slaves. So are you saying that this was your kingdom on the west coast of Africa? If you are saying that, then we have a king here selling Africans. Are you saying that a Judean king was selling Judeans or Israelites, this is the trouble you have when you use revisionist methodology to try to prove your doctrine to be real. Now, I do want to read this and I want to try and get through with this before I get into the meat of my argument. While company compounds facilitated interaction between European traders and native Africans, the true center of European operations in Wida were the various forces that existed along the coast near the town of Gli Wei or Gli Hu. That is what it was actually called. Owned by the Portuguese crown, the French company of the Indians and the British Royal African Company, the forts were mainly used to store slaves and trading merchandise. Made up of mud walls, the forts provided tolerable protection for the Europeans, but were not strong enough to withstand a legitimate attack from the natives. Who were the natives? The Africans who were storming these forts, these so-called Judean kings, what, housing slaves. That's the connection that you're trying to use to say that, oh, this is Judah because Emmanuel Bowen said so, because some sister came on here because she's a doctor. That absolutely means nothing. She did not give a historical method on her claim at all. Now, here's a primary source here once again. Now, Pierre Labat, writing in the year of 1698 on the island of Martinique, Martinique, he recounts what he had personally heard from the lips of Pierre Braguez, who in turn actually witnessed the serpent coat at Ouida, or as y'all try to say, Judah. With Three minutes. Gui Hu, when the king himself was in attendance and the consult of the oracle. This is probably the earliest recorded account of an eyewitness before European, European context, contacts had modified the ritual. The narrative runs as follows. The people get on their knees and they pray to a snake, Yara. There's gonna, all you're going to find out, and I want to get ready to close this thing on out, here in Judah, which you mentioned, which you said the Yoruba people, this is Judah. This is not Judah. This is Gui Hu, or as the Yoruba people say, Zui Da. You're going to find out that there was nothing but snake worship there. You're going to find out the Yoruba people, they had their own Ifa traditions with Oshun, Ogun. You're going to find out that the Asante people, they worship the gods of um, Asase Ya. You're going to find out all of these different gods. What I need for you to do is show me people calling themselves and writing for themselves calling themselves Israelites. You're showing me doctors and you're paraphrasing it. You're not giving me the complete context of the book. No one knows, and you guys do this a lot. They're calling them black Jews in which we know the Portuguese were converting Jews. I'm going to be dealing with all of that in my next round. Maybe I'll ask for an extra round here, but you have to show black Israelites coming to America. You are playing semantics worth Judaism and Jews. 
Portuguese also were Jews. Um, you had European Jews. You had Sephardic Jews. You have to show me Israelites. You have to show me cosmology. You have to show me their patriarchal narrative. You have to show me a Torah. You have to show me a Torah backed up by what you would call the Mishnah and Gemara. You're not showing me any of those things. And when you do show me those things, I'm going to always continue to stand right there and show you Portuguese influence, European influence upon the native Africans of that time in the 14th to the 17th, 18th century, because this is what they were doing. They were influencing Africans with the religion and stealing their land and also enslaving them and shipping them off. I'm also going to be getting into the naming rituals of the Africans so we can get away from the nonsense in which we begin to believe. Guys, I'm telling y'all, a lot of this stuff is just word semantics that these Hebrews online like to play. Thank you. All right, brother. Um, you have 28 seconds left, you know. Um, so my brother Yasha, you got two minutes to uh rebuttal, Chris. And then Maybe. when you hear this, when you hear this, that means you can go keep going straight into your 10th round, your um, your um, 10 seconds, 10 minutes. Yeah, all right. So so, so, hey, yo, so, hey, Yara, I hate to cut you off real quick. Excuse me for being rude on your time. Hey, you want to do another round, Yara? I'll think about it after this one. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um, okay. Um, uh, first of you all, got, you got um, 10 minutes, Yara. It's on uh, you, brother. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen. Chris Harris, I thought you was better than this. Come on, man. Let's do it. Um, let me share this screen real quick. Let me share this screen. And... Your screen is sharing. Let me know when you're ready. Are we ready? Here's the issue that we have, right? Start time. When we talk about semantics, right? What Chris Harris wants to do is try to split hairs in this debate. And if you guys understand, especially the Israelite brothers that are listening, who have to have these uh, uh, conversations with these guys, they want to make it seem as though Jew, Hebrew, and Israelite is something completely different, Right? When we go into any definition of what an Israelite is, you'll see the term Hebrew. If we go into any definition of what the Hebrew is, we'll see Israelite. So him asking, I want to see the word Israelite. That's foolish. In the African culture, in any ancient Near Eastern culture, they never refer to themselves uh, uh, constantly as the same thing. He said it himself. He referred to these people himself as the kingdom of Judah, as Israelites, as Hebrews. He's used the term all throughout his exchange interchangeably, Jew, Hebrew, Israelite. He said it the entire time. So if he can't figure out what's the difference, how does he expect someone else to show him? Because there is nothing to show in that instance. Hebrew, Israelite, Jew, it's all the same. Whether they're European Jew, whether they're African Jew, if they're still an Israelite, they're still considered Hebrews. You're talking about ethnicity, religion, and one all converted together. So it, it, that's a that's a that's a question that no one is going to be able to answer because it's simply trash. So let's look at this right here, right? Let me make this a little bit bigger for y'all, family, so y'all can see what he says. And he goes into the whole understanding and conversation of Weta. I never said anything about Weta. I specifically said the kingdom of Judah. And the Judeans that were in west, the west coast of Africa. Here's a source, Barbara on Guinea, right? The writings of Jane Barber on West Africa, 1678 to 1712, volumes one and two. Listen to what it says. That the kings of Jehoshaphat and Akka fate on their thrones in the place of Samaria near the gate in ancient times, the towns were not so large as our capital cities in Europe. Is already telling you, in order to understand what an Israelite kingdom looks like, it's small in stature. This is why I agree with uh, Israel Finkelstein when he says you shouldn't be looking for an expansive kingdom of the Israelites. They were small towns. And we're going to see the same thing being done in the West Coast of Africa. In ancient times, the times were not so large, the towns were not so large, our capital cities in Europe, which can hardly be substituted by the product of the lands for a hundred miles about them. Watch this. They were then small 
inhabited by a small number of laborers and husbandmen sufficient to till the ground about them. Watch this. Thence it is that the sole tribe of Judah. He's not talking about a land. He's talking about a tribe of people. The sole tribe of Judah reckoned a hundred and fifteen such towns within its precincts. He asked about the material culture, each of them having some villages depending on it. The market was a general rendezvous for all affairs and at the town gate all public concerns were managed, especially in the days of the patriarchs. This is what they're talking about. So he uh, has clearly you no know, understanding about this information. Here's another source, a mission to uh, Galilee, king of Dahomey. I never said all of the kingdom of Dahomey were Jews or black Jews, but let's talk about the breakdown of these people. Here it says the land around it is called uh, Left Fafan from the Nego people whose chief caddy was slain by King Gezo and who were finally settled here. The eyes dwell with the light upon the numerous country villages. Like again, here's a validating source like the 115 towns of the tribe of Judah and upon the thin forest of palms raising from the tapestry of herbage were wavy, here cut short, which continued to make this spot the freedies or paradise of their homey land. So we're talking about two separate sources, family, two separate sources that contribute to the fact and state specifically that there were 115 tribes, uh, towns of the soul tribe of Judah, right? Not any snake worship. And if you go into who were involved in snake worship, it was the tribe of Dan, which is what we know in Hebrew Israelite tradition was the, was called the serpent tribe. That was their monogram, the snake. So if he's looking for the tribe of Dan, he may have something there with the snake worship. But the tribe of Judah, you'll never see that here. Let's continue, right? Reclaiming Africa, African Hebrews before pre-colonial area. Page 219, the Africans who wrote the Bible by Dr. Ellis Dakwa. But let's see here. In the 1930s, a European priest who went to live among the Akon people in West Africa found close relationship with Akon and Hebrew religious thinking, practices, belief, and culture. To this priest, the evidence was so overwhelming that it confirmed the origin of the Hebrew God and the, uh, and the Akan God. In his book entitled Hebrew Ibs of West Africa, since he bought up uh, what Catholic or what Father uh, Williams, as uh, uh, J. Williams said, he said, revealed through linguistic studies. This is what you asked for, Chris. The linguistic studies, it's already been done. You're just denying it through the linguistic studies that the supposed Hebrew name Yahweh originated from the Akon word in Yahweh for God. Let's continue. Reclaiming African Hebrews before pre-colonial era. Longstreet, WSS, Lovo, J, 1970, Royal Review of Black Song, The Forge and Flame. Let's see what it says here, right? Uh, let me see if I can go through it here. I'll just go down here. Can you see this real good? Sonata? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Here in the highlighted area, people, right? And this is from the book, The Black Song. And we're talking about Hebrews Israelites and Jews who went over on the slave ships and made it to the Americas. It says if the American white man fancies that he was the first to teach the Bible to his black slave, he is quite mistaken. A number of the African travelers testify to African acquaintance with the Christian Bible. Jobson, for example, writes of the knowledge by Gambian natives in the early 17th century of Adam and Eve. This was in the early 17th century in Gambia, who they call Adam and Ivaha. Noah's flood and Moses. Uh, Ellis reports that the Vi priests traditionally uh, possessed copies of the New Testament in Arabic. They knew the life of Christ and the principle of a Christian faith. Right. So here they had a Hebrew. They had a Bible, including in every Bible that they have is the five books of the Torah. So they have evidence of a Torah. People documenting this. Let's continue. It says Starkey found that the Fontuma and the Kafar schoolmaster had Arabic versions of the Pentateuch. This is what we're saying about the people when they keep asking, where is it in their language? We know that when Askia Muhammad came into West Africa in 1492, what he did was he had the Israelites acculturated into the Arabic uh, culture. It's simple as that. He says the Psalms of David and the book of Isaiah, the brother, uh, he says, um, uh, 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 and further Mandingos entertain him with the stories of Joseph and brother and Moses, uh, David and Solomon. They gave out the stories. Now, Chris likes to say 
that these people were converted by the Portuguese, right? Now, is he saying that the Portuguese were Christians or were the Portuguese Jews? Because if the Portuguese were Jews, like you said, Chris, why would they be uh, 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 converting them to anything else? But I'm going to show you where you're wrong with your understanding about the conversion, right? I'm going to take you directly to this understanding of what this is, right? And we're going to talk about the conversion. And let me see if I could open this link here. When he talks about conversion. Remember, if you need me to stop, you got to let me know. He keeps saying the Portuguese did the Portuguese. What? Actually, in the terms of. Conversion. All right, brother, brother, I stop your time. I stop your time. You had three minutes and 34 seconds. You're going in okay. and out. You ready? You ready now? Okay. Yep, I'm ready. It says the All conversal right. well, phenomenon. Got three minutes and 34 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. It says the conversal phenomenon, right? This is what a conversal is, people. And this is where these guys get this wrong. The conversal phenomena is rooted in the inquisitions and programs that took place in the Iberian Peninsula, historical Spain and Portugal, right? A conversal was, listen to this clearly, people, because this kills his old argument about conversion. A conversal was and remains a Jew that converted to Roman Catholicism in Spain and Portugal in the 14th and 15th centuries or one of their descendants. Not uh, 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 people being converted to Judaism, as he's continuing to say. They weren't converting people to, to Judaism. They were converting people who were already Jews. That's what a converso is. That's what a converso is. He's not going to be able to show you any mass conversion of Jews coming into the West Coast of Africa and converting people to Judaism. He's not going to be able to show you that. What he is going to be able to show you what the Portuguese were doing was converting people to Christianity. That's what these Portuguese were doing. That's what a converso is. It's simple. Let me read it for you again, Chris Harris. The conversal phenomenon is rooted in the inquisitions and programs that took place in the Iberian Peninsula, historical Spain and Portugal. A conversal was and remains a Jew that converted to Roman Catholicism in Spain and Portugal, uh, par uh, particularly during the 14th and 15th century. That's exactly what that is. Watch this. Those who remain openly or their descendants, the majority of Spain's Jews converted to Christianity. They were already Jews, Chris. So when they went into South Africa, when I'm sorry, when they went into West Africa, what did they do? They converted those people to what? Christianity. The what? The people that had already been claiming that they were Jews from historic, from, from, from times past, from well before the time of Alexander the Great, well before going back to the time uh, of, of the Exodus to 1446 BCE. The Yoruba uh, clan talk about how they came in. The Igbo, they talk about how they came into that land well before any type of conversion occurred. You can't dismiss these people's uh, oral tradition simply based on the fact that you want to say that this was they were conversions or they were conversos. They were already Jews. You can't find me another term of people who were being converted to Judaism. These were Jews being converted to Roman Catholicism. That's what a converso is, Chris. So stick that feather in your hat, right? Let's go back here real quick. I think I got about one minute left, right? Let's go down here. Yep. Let's go down here. Uh, I'll keep going. I'll keep going, right? And then I'm going to prove to him. Let me show you this right here. Because you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to draw from anything that I'm saying tonight. Let me open this link real quick. This will be the last one I'll be able to show you with my time right here, right? It says the history of Jews and conversos in Spain. Watch this. A converso used primarily to refer to converts, what? From Judaism to Christianity, what? And their descendants, but sometimes included Christianized Muslims and their descendants. Chris, you're not really understanding what you're saying. Stop telling people that these people were conversos. They were being converted to Judaism. They were already Jews. They were already Jews. All right, Yara, move your screen. We're going to let Chris come in. This is his second round. Um, you got two minutes to rebuttal, Chris. And when you hear this, 
That means you're going into your temp. So I don't want to stop you. Just keep going into your um 10 minutes. All right? The time will start. When you start, Chris, you got two minutes to rebuttal. Let me know when you're ready. Unmute yourself. Okay. Um, I want you guys to know that Yara has forfeited this debate. He hasn't time shown starts. you one time Israelites in America. He's shown you false inferences about the word Jew. As a matter of fact, he's even sat on this platform all night. And guess what the name of his presentation is? The name of his presentation is Reclaiming Africa. It's called Reclaiming Africa. In other words, he's saying the Jews, are you inferring that Jews are reclaiming Africa? Are you reclaiming Africa in a different name? Your entire lineup and your entire presentation has nothing to do with proving Jews in America. And you also brought up the dang on God and Yame. Shame on you. I'm cutting you up in the next round on that. I want you guys to notice what he keeps saying. Oh, Jewish, Jewish tribes were small pockets, but then he calls them a kingdom. Then he sits up there and says, well, what was the location of it? See, I already proved to you that the people of Weta, it was never called Judah. It was called Guihu. The locals called it Guihu. Portuguese called it Weda or Agjuda. Anywhere you see this stuff at, you're going to find Portuguese, Europeans, conversions, Bibles. And unfortunately, we don't even have enough time because guess what? It was on you to prove that they was on them boats and you never proved it. We know niggas. Oh, excuse me. We know black people were converted to Jews. I've already proven that, and I'm going to go even harder now, proving that with some sources by Tobias Green, Jonathan Scorch, and Tudor Parfit. All right? And I got to speed this thing up because everything you did just shows how disingenuous your entire presentation was. You didn't prove anything. Once again, you did what I thought you were going to do. You showed that you're trying to use some revisionist methodology to prove that Africans are Jews, or excuse me, Israelites. You never showed me them saying it. And then you even tried to, you have a linguistic argument by saying what? They had Bibles written in Arabic. Where are the Bibles written at Hebrew at? You cut yourself on that. Man, stop. I see you. With my new pen, I see you. Let's get on into this. So I gotta stop my time for two minutes so I can get this, so I can go ahead and just bust him up real good because he's done now. Because, like I said, they throw your time so stopped up. at 9 47. Oh man, oh man. Okay, so let me uh, you're let just me getting into your, your 10 minutes. Okay, let me let me do my screen share real quick. Share the screen, Bill Parcells. Sam Pepper Johnson and Lawrence Taylor on the strong side. Let's clean this quarterback on up. Let's clean them on up. Let's clean them on up. Okay. Um, what I want to deal with real quick, where is my untitled presentation? Oh, here it is right here. Yara. So we're going to deal with it now because you ain't no damn Jew. Wake up. Wake up. Here it is. Now, this is by Tobias Green. And this is what it says because you're there in the 17th century. I'm going to meet you right there. Now, this is what Tobias Green says in his book. He states, and I'll give you guys the bibliographies after the debate. I have no problem with doing that. He says, by the early 17th century, one of the most unlikely centers for proselytizing activity on the part of Jewry was on the west coast of Africa. Many of the Sephardic new Christians who apostated from Christianity and began to practice elements of Judaism did so after visiting ports of Senegambia and Upper Guinea. You're done. You're done. One of them, Antonio Espinosa, gave a typical account of evangelical activities of Jews in the port of Kachu, which is in modern Guinea-Bissau, circa 1630. One day, he and his crewmates gathered with four Portuguese men, four Portuguese men who knew Captain Carrera. Um, the captain in the ship in which Espinosa was sailing, who had already tried to convert Espinosa to Judaism. And they all said so many things to Espinosa about the Mosaic law, discoursing about all that nonsense and recounting on God, blah, 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 had given the law to Moses. Now, why am I bringing this up by Tobias Green? Because I'm showing you, yes, I agree, conversos were converts to Catholicism because they left Judaism. But when they went to Africa, they were escaping from what? Christian persecution, Roman persecution, the Catholic Church persecution of Judaism. You should know about the Alhambra decree in which they chased all practicing Jews out of Spain. You should know they tried to hide their identity. No different than Hitler when he was killing Jews left and right. 
So this is what they did. And this is what Tobias says. They apostatized from Christianity. I agree. Yes, they were conversos. But you're trying to make an established fact that these Jews were Israelites. They weren't. They weren't. They were Africans who converted. Let's keep going. Um, I want to read this real quick. And I, I just want to skip past this right here. It says, blah, 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 falling into uh, idolatry, mosaic law. Stuff. I want to read this right here. However, this evangelical activity was not limited to the new Christians who passed through the region. The more devout Sephardim in the area began to proselytize some of their African servants and slaves. So now we got Portuguese ex-conversos doing what, Yara? Converting slaves, converting Africans. Let's get more into it. The general evidence related to the conversion of Africans to Judaism on the Guinea coast, because that's where you've been all night, congregation of Sephardim established in Portugal, Senegambia, where you've been at all night. And moreover, there was a widespread anxiety among the Christian community of the Portuguese settlements of West Africa regarding the religious activities of the Sephardim. Thus, in a letter, July 30th, 19, 1635, the Bishop of Cabo Verde recounted a story which, for him, had all the hallmarks of another Jewish conversion in West Africa. Three African servants had circumcised themselves, although they were Christians. They began to adopt forms of Judaism given to them by that of the Portuguese. Why? Because the Portuguese said, hey, we can return back to Judaism here. This is what Tobias Green says. This is what Tudor Parfait backs up. This is what Jonathan Scorch backs up in their books. And they're all saying it. So you played something tricky and you never showed Jews on the West Coast of Africa. You, I mean, sorry, you never showed Israelites coming to America. You created a straw man. So here's the God of the Akan people who was a Sase Yah. So they see that name Yah there and they play games. Watch this is the goddess of fertility, not Yahweh. Love, not Yahweh. Procreation, peace, truth, and the dry, lush earth of the Akan of Ghana and the Ivory Coast. She is also the mother of the dead, known as the Mother Earth, Aberewa. I'm sorry if I cannot pronounce this. Ase is the wife of Inya Capone, the male sky deity, and is the daughter of Inyame. So Yahweh got a daughter? Yahweh got a daughter? The female aspect of the Inyakapon, Inyame, Odukoma Trinity, all of whom created the universe. Asase gave birth to two children, Bea and Tano. Bea is also named Bia. Asase is the mother of Anansi, the trickster, and the divine stepmother of the sacred chiefs. Asase is very powerful, though no temples are dedicated to her. Instead, she is worshipped in the agricultural fields of the Asante and other Akans. Asase is highly respected amongst Akans. Sacrifices are given to her for favor and blessings. Asase's favorite people are the Bono people. Planet Earth is Asase Yah's symbol, while Venus is Asase Afua's symbol. Oh! So let's continue on. Now, the name Asase means earth in Twi. This is the language they speak. It is not a Semitic language. The name Yah, there's that name Yah that y'all love playing with. Oh, you Hebrews in this chat. Oh, you want to be Israelites. The name Yah don't mean Yahweh, and it's not talking about Yahweh. It means one born on Thursday, meaning that Asase was created on Thursday. So when you see the name Asase Yah, we are talking and speaking about the deity being created and creating everything on Thursday, which is a far cry from what Yahweh supposedly did, and he got tired on the seventh day. Ain't that something? So I want to show y'all something, and this is in um, Gwendolyn Mito Hall's Louisiana Slave Base online. Um, I pulled this up, and this is what it says about slaves, right? And she says, once brought to Louisiana and sold, the slaves were usually given Christian names or classical names of the Greco-Roman civilization. Some names were inspired by popular plays of the time. Lindor, probably the most frequent male name in Louisiana slave database, is a character in The Barber of Seville, a very successful play written in 1773 by French writer Pierre, I'm not going to pronounce that last name. Another character in the same play is Lavelle, which means the hip one. This name is also very popular among the slaves of Louisiana. Three minutes and 30 seconds. Watch where I go, family. Nevertheless, many retain their African names. So it's quite usual for slaves born in Africa and the Creoles to have at least two names. The Christian name given by the master and the African name they brought with them for mythical or mystical protection. Let's go down here now. Now, 
Here's a list of the names that they, of the uh, naming practice amongst the full bay of Senegambia in the Louisiana variants, which were the slaves. You got Hamadi, Amadis, Demba, Dimba, Yero, Yara, Yara, Yera, Pate, Pate, Pati. Let's go down to the naming practices amongst the Akan people in West Africa and the Louisiana variants. These are the slaves that were there. And let's go down to Thursday where you see Yao O Ada, which means Ya, Ya, or Yaba. Or in the female name, in the Louisiana variant name, because remember, I spoke about loan words. This is why it's all coming full circle here. Loan words, you got Ya, Abba, Abba, Aya, Yoas, Yaba, and Yebas. It means born on Thursday. It got nothing to do with anything that, that's connected to the Bible. Their language, which you never address, has anything to do with the Bible. It's a Twi language, which is from the Niger-Congo region. It has nothing to do with any Semitic verse. You didn't show me any of the religious rites of these so-called people. All you did was mention what? This is what this author said. This is what this author said. This is what this Arab said. This is what this European said. But you never showed me the people themselves um, and, and um, people themselves speaking about David, speaking about Solomon, speaking about Moses, speaking. Of, they'll speak about Jesus now because of the European and Portuguese colonization that's been in that area. Yara, you have failed to display the historical method, the anthropological method, and you yourself even said that you were going to prove that they were on the boats, and you never proved that they were on the boats. Here, I'll show you that they weren't on the boats. And we're going to go here to slavevoyages.org, and let me enlarge this so I can continue to bust you up real bad in this debate here. All right? So if you go here to the slave base and you type in the name, let's type in the name Ya. Or let's just type in the name, Yah. Boom. We're going to hit apply. Boom. This is what all Israelites do. I've already showed you what it means. I've already showed you that the name Yah means one born on Thursday. But we get a lot of people here born there. But look where they're sent to, Yara. They're sent to, look, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone. Everywhere we go, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone. Watch this, Yao, Sierra Leone. All these people sent to Sierra Leone. You didn't show me no connections of these people on the slave boats. Baya, Bua, uh, La, Baya, Say. Uh, there's all these Yas. Look, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone. Look where they're shipped to, bro. They sit right there. S captive fate settled in Sierra Leone. If you just type in the name Yah, you're going to find out that all those people were settled in, guess where, guys? Sierra Leone. Here's another one. Iya settled in. Guess what, guys? Sierra Leone. Where's the Israelites that were settled in America? Where's your primaries for any of this? And I knew you were going to do this. That's why I said I didn't even have to work hard. Here. Oh, God damn, it. man. Y'all coming in. Both of y'all bringing this pain. I was both, cooking. Both of y'all bringing this fire. All right, we got the last and final round with um, my brother Elder Yara. You got um, two minutes to rebuttal. And when you hear this sound, that means we're going right into your 10 minute round. So, my brother, when you're ready, you can upload your screen. Do you have anything you want to share? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're going to get it in. All hey. right, Chris is coming hard. He ain't playing no games, man. man. Wait, so, we Chris agreed to three rounds. I thought it was just two. You want to no. do another one, Yara? No, yeah, it's one more. One. This is mine, my last one. Oh, this is yeah. your last round? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. So, um, no, no, it's your last round, but Chris will respond, and that'll be yeah, his yeah. last round. Okay. All right, so yeah, right, um, right, right, right. let me know when you're ready, um, y'all. Yeah, I'm, re I'm ready. So, All right, time again, start. You got two minutes to rebuttal. Yeah. Again, people, notice what this debate was about. I show sources from researchers that tells us that Israelites came over to the Americas. They didn't get here by bus. They didn't get here by train, and they didn't get here by plane. They Turn on your camera, Chris. Ships, Chris, come on, man. Why don't talk to the people like they're stupid? We hear what you're saying. We hear what you're saying. At the end of the day, Chris, you've argued everything tonight except what I presented. I'm the affirmative in this debate. You've showed nothing to rebut any of my sources. Nothing at all whatsoever. 
I showed you sources that talks about two sources that talks about the tribe, the soul tribe of Judah in the 115 towns. You never once addressed that specifically, right? I've showed you uh, sources from Alan H. Gabi, Maurice Delafuse, Dana Marnici, who's been on this show, and others that says Israelites came over from the west coast of Africa to the Americas. And you never addressed it. You simply saying, no, it isn't. That's not a rebuttal. That's not a rebuttal. You have to show sources, Chris, that says what I'm telling you as the affirmative in this debate, that my information is incorrect. You haven't been able to prove that. Let me share my screen and help you out some more. Let me know if I need to stop the time, brother. Uh, yeah, I'm sharing now. Okay. I'm sharing now. So you should be able to see it, right? Let's deal with this, right? He's talking about He's talking about there's no evidence of Israelites on the west coast of Africa. You have to stop this lie, right? So again, the Ephraimite Moors, the majority of the Israelite tribes resided under the authority of the house of Joseph in turn was ruled by the tribe of uh, uh, of Ephraim, right? So many of the Moorish Ephraimites, which they go by the term Afar, continued to move westward ultimately settling in Morocco or Murakosh, Mauritania, and Mali. That's the west coast of Africa, right? So he keeps saying, this is where I'm staying. This is where he wanted to have the debate. I haven't left out of the west coast of Africa. I'm going to deal with you completely on these on these sources, right? In, uh, in uh, 1311, Abu Qar II, the emperor of Mali, set sail across the Atlantic with a thousand vessel fleet and thus began the settlement of the house of Joseph in the Americas. The voyage is recorded by the Egyptian historian Ibn Fadullah el Humari. Uh, the Malayan Ephorites Bahar before uh, joined members of the Dene tribes of the Danite, such as the Navajo and the Apache, in populating West Lands. Uh, let's keep current. The, uh, the Bari Bari or the Ibar tribe, right? Uh, the KJV, he wants to talk about lexicon. He wants to talk about long words. The KJV translates uh, Bari or Biri. It means be well, a Biari. We see this in the African culture of the Bari, right? Um, is this belonging to a fountain, right? Let's continue. Uh, the work of Almeida. The work of Almeida was based on the story of Ethiopia written by a Roman Catholic missionary, Pedro Paez, who wrote about Jews in Ethiopia. Other people writing about African Hebrews in his time, for example, the Scottish cartographer John Ogilvy and the French counterpart, the Anvil Ogilvy published Africa, being an accurate description of the regions of Egypt and Libya. That's your West African sources. These people are there in these in these regions, right? Watch this. Let me go down here real quick and show Chris this, right? Because he likes to say things that are wholly untrue. And I'm glad he went and talked about how people failed. Let's get it right here, right? This is from the uh, this is an article from the Heretz, right? And this is what the, he keeps saying what they didn't say. Their oral traditions is exactly what they're saying. They're being recorded. So stop lying, saying that these people aren't saying these things. This is exactly what they're saying. The story of the synagogues hated reclusive Jewish community. The Portuguese navigators documenting their voyages around Africa's shores in the 15th century actually reveal how the Europeans saw the world and the Jews. Watch this. They make a clear distinction. The European Jewish newspaper known as Red published documents from a Portuguese traveler who wrote about what he saw in Senegal during the time of the slave trade. This is what he saw, Chris Harris, not what he came to uh, convert. He didn't see any conversions, no evidence of it. This is what he saw. These were already Jews, Chris. In Senegal, in Gambia, in Senegambia, some of the people here believe in Muhammad, but the majority are idol worshippers, worth the nameless Portuguese navigator. In this land, there are Jews known as Gauls, and they are black like the rest of the inhabitants, but they have no synagogues and do not conduct Jewish ceremonies. That simple fact right there tells you that they were influenced by Judaism because Judaism says you have to have a synagogue. Judaism says you have to have certain practice or you can't be a Jew. So we know that there was no conversion. There was no Portuguese rabbis there. 
So that alone, Chris, tells you that these people were already considered themselves as Jews. They do not live like the other blacks, but separately, he reported, because they do not dare enter the village. They locate themselves behind the houses of the ruler of the village, and at the dawn, they sing his praises until he grants them a portion of millet, and then they go back. If they do not, the rest of the blacks would not tolerate them. So great is their hatred for them, which forbids them from entering any house except for that of the ruler of the village. If they find the inside village, they are beaten with sticks. They were already Jews being treated separately and in, in an aversion to them being Jews. Come on, Chris. The Uniform Writers of the Arrest article tried to make the claim that because the Jews uh, uh, in the document did not practice Hebrew customs like Chris is doing, because that's what Jews do, they were not really Jews. The most likely reason why the tribe didn't practice Hebrew traditions is because many Israelites were scattered and lost their culture and identity during their persecution. Also, this document is important because it shows how much the Israelites were hated by the native African population. This also helps debunk the myth that Africans sold other Africans. They both were African, but two different tribes. The local West Africans helped sell Israelites who helped migrate from Israel, a.k.a. Northeast Africa. And this whole notion of Africans selling Africa, he said, well, well Judah, well, was the tribe of Judah selling slaves? No, they weren't. This, the idea of shadow slavery was completely different from what we see here in America. America. So it was a different practice in a different business. Let's deal with let's deal with this right here. You're dead on all these issues, right? Conrad Malte Braun, James uh, Gates Percival, the kingdom of Loango contains black Jews, right? And I'm going to bust you on this. Scattered throughout the country, they are despised by the Negroes who do not even desire to eat with them. They are occupied in trade and keep the Sabbath. So strictly that they, they, they do not even converse on that day. They have separate burying ground, very far from any inhabitation. The tombs are constructed with masonry and ornate, uh, ornamented with Hebrew inscriptions. Now let's talk about the Loango Jews. They say, well, the Loango Jews were converted. They were conversos. If you understand the history of the Luango Jews, the Luango Jews were actually born Jews who were taken from their Jewish parents, the black Jews that were exiled from the kingdom of Spain and Portugal. Their children were taken from them, raised as Christian, many of them, and then sent back to uh, enslave or to oppress their forefathers or their ancestors and their parents. If you really want to understand the Luango Jews, but the Luango Jews were ethnic, blood born Jews, black Jews. Let's continue. Right. Uh, let's go here. Let's go here. I ain't going to even take you into a lot of that. Right. Uh, let me get to it right here. This is exactly where I want to go. He says, well, where is their Torah written in Hebrew? Come on, Chris Harris. You got you smarter than that, right? Three so, minutes. So, the Askia Muhammad in 1492, when he came into the west coast of Africa, the Arabic, Arabic language became the lingua franca. You understand that? That became the official language in the west coast of Africa. So we know pre-colonial times in the 12th century, a copy of the Quran from the 12th century, according to notes in the text, it was bought uh, for a Moroccan king for a sum of gold. Here's why this is important. Because in chapter 3, verse 3, the Quran says, it is God he was sent down the book of the Quran to you, Prophet Muhammad, with truth, confirming what came before it. And he sent down the what? Torah. And the angel. So if you understand that the Torah and the angel is what? The Gospels. So these were in the West Coast of Africa well before conversion, Chris Harris. No Portuguese brought this in. This was bought in by the Arab slave traders. This was bought in by the Arab rulers. So this is what you don't understand. So when he's telling you, look, where's the Hebrew? Where's the Hebrew language? Where's their Torah written in Hebrew? They would not have written it in Hebrew. They would have written it in Arabic. They would have had a Torah written in Arabic. Let's go back and let's look at that real quick. Right? Let's deal with them right here. Ishmael Diade Hadra, a historian from Timbuktu on the west coast of Africa, Chris Harris, has found old Hebrew texts. Isn't that what you asked for, Chris Harris? 
Old Hebrew text, the primary source among the city's historical records. He also researched his own past and discovered that he is descended from the Moroccan Jewish traders of the Abana family. And if you know about the Abana family and the cultural family, the Abana family and the cultural family were Jews who were trading in Portugal. But they were natural blood born Jews. As he interviewed elders in the village of his relatives, he has discovered that knowledge of the family's Jewish identity has been what? Preserved in secret, Chris Harris. What? Out of fear of prosecution. This is New York Times article 2007. So when you keep asking this ridiculous question, how come we don't see it written in that written in Hebrew? Well, we have historical records that you can see today in the Hebrew text. This is in the museum in Timbuktu right today. You can go and read that Hebrew text from that time period, Chris Harris. So we know that there were Jews, black Jews, black Israelites, black Hebrews writing in Hebrew before any time of conversion that you can produce. You can't show that, Chris Harris. You're dead on all of that, bro. You're dead on all of that. Look at this right here. The cemetery of the Jews in Timbuktu is today, today, a simple dune covered in shrubs without appetites. This is the lost domain of some forgotten deaths in history. This is what he's saying. They have evidence of Jews buried, black Jews buried in those areas. <laughs> those people were there, and I've shown you plenty of sources telling you and showing you that these people were on the slave ships. These people were in the Americas. Here's the source for you, Chris Harris. I don't get what, what part of it you're not missing. You're not missing. What's missing? It was on the old coast of Africa, bought over. On the All slave right, ship. last and final and round, Chris. I want, um, <clears throat> I want everybody to get your questions ready. Remember, you are not coming in to teach. You are coming in to ask a question. So... You're coming in to ask a question, not to teach. Chris, you got two minutes in this round to rebuttal. And when you hear this, you already know it's going right into your 10-minute round. The last and final round, Chris, is on you. All right. So what I'm going to do is I want to frame my argument. I'm going to be, uh, I'm, I'm going to address something. Um, I'm sure everybody, once again, how dishonest Yara is here. Time and, start. Okay, time start. And I just want to show everybody something real quick. How All many right. people in the audience have heard Yara address the name of the debate about Israelites being in America? He's talking about Senegambia. He's talking about the kingdom of Judah. He's talking about the Ghanaian God. He's talking about the Akan, the Asante, but he's not synthesizing all this information and showing you how these people got on the boats. The people that he wanted to mention that got on those boats were in fact sent to Sierra Leone. So he doesn't have anywhere to go. See, the first place that you're going to start, and I'm, you're looking very inquisitive there. The first place you should go was on the boat and say, okay, here's the Israelites right here on the boat. What you're doing is you're playing word semantics with the word Jew. No, everywhere that you went, it says that these people practice Judaism. I'm going to go into that source that you just read real quick, because that was very, very good of you to read a source from Haaretz. And many times these guys feel like if I throw so many sources at Chris or throw, throw so many sources at um, the guy I'm debating about, um, I win the debate because I'm showing you sources about what other people said, and I'm not showing you sources. Um, I'm not showing you, I'm, I'm, I'm failing to yield the anthropological or the historical method. I'm just showing you what a European said. Well, guess what? I agree with the European, what they're saying when they speak about Judaism, because we know we had a Portuguese influence in which I've mentioned by Tobias Green in his paper, and which I've mentioned by Jonathan Scorch, and which I've also been using Tudor Par Facebook when he mentions that there were Jews there converting. I'm going to go into a presentation here, but first I want to show everybody this source you went to, because I'm going to discredit you right now, that source that you use. Sonetta is my screen up real quick, and from here- Yes, your screen is up. OK, from here, we could just take it on into um, my round. And this isn't going to take a lot of time here right here. So Yara goes to the Haaretz magazine, which is a, a, a Jewish article right here. And I want to read this to everybody because this shows a lack of comprehension. And since I'm showing, <laughs> since I'm 
hasn't shown lack of comprehension here and he hasn't shown any synthesization with the with the information that he's proved i'm going to show that he's very dishonest here with this article that he read and it says in the 15th century the portuguese began to sail along the west african coast searching for the sea route to india along the way they landed in all sorts of uh, places along the coast they saw they where they traded with the natives and documented everything they saw this is what he says um there's a beautiful brother right there. One of these documents written by an anonymous Portuguese navigator provides us with a rare glimpse into a very strange phenomenon. A group of Jews who lived in West Africa near the Gambia River. Notice they don't say Israelites, they say Jews. This is very important. That's why I've been standing on his word, okay? Some people, this is quote, some of the people here believe in Muhammad, but the majority are idol worshipers, wrote the nameless Portuguese navigator. Quote, in this land, there are Jews known as Gauls, and they are black like the rest of the inhabitants. So I didn't know that one of the 12 tribes of Israel were called Gaul. Which one of the sons of Jacob was that? But neither here nor there. It says, but they have no synagogues and do not conduct Jewish ceremonies. So this article right off rip, is not advocating that these were Israelites. Let's just read the rest of it. You already know what I'm gonna do. Here come the tank running over the nonsense. Given this, why was our Portuguese navigator convinced that they were Jews? Question mark. The rest of this letter shed some light on the matter. You didn't read this, Yara, very dishonest of you. Quote, they do not live with other blacks, but separately, end quote. He reported, quote, because they do not dare enter the villages. They locate themselves behind houses of the ruler of the village. And at the dawn, they sing his praises until he grants them a portion of millet. And they, then they go. And if they don't do so, the rest of the blacks would not tolerate them. So great is their hatred for them, which forbids them from entering any house except for that of the ruler of the village. If they find them inside the village, they are beaten with sticks. Now, excuse me, many societies in West Africa have wandering storytellers known as griots, jelly, jali, jawal, galu, etc. It seems that these are the same Gauls our Portuguese navigator saw. Now, these traveling troubadours commanded great respect and had a defined role in the tribal society of West Africa. However, they also lived separately from the rest of the inhabitants of the region and lived off of their art. So why did the Portuguese navigator decide they were Jews? This is why it's so important to read the whole article. And Yara, I don't think you're debating me. I think you're trying to make the claim or stake a claim that you're the biggest and baddest Hebrew teacher on YouTube. Because that's all y'all really are, are Hebrew teachers uh, on the internet. Y'all just on the internet doing this. And if you could throw so many sources at me, it can make you seem that you're just the biggest and baddest person. But I'm showing you and I'm discrediting you with you using this to synthesize that Jews came to America. Look what the article says. And two, it's irrelevant to the conversation. Look what it says. <laughs> so why did the Portuguese navigator decide they were Jews? When he traveled in Africa and noticed a completely separate group of people and furthermore, a seemingly hated group, he could only use the terms he knew to describe them because the only group in the world that he came from matching such a description was the Jews, was the Jews. The Gauls, quote, end quote, all of a sudden became Jews for him, even after himself admitted that they did not conduct a single known Jewish ritual. Here it is. More than anything else, this story teaches us how when we reach the most isolated and distant corner of the world, we are capable of seeing it only through the perspective we brought with us from home. So when the Portuguese Jews were sailing around Africa and they saw a reclusive group of people that had their own customs and everybody hated them, they began to identify themselves with that group of people. You didn't read the whole article. You didn't read the whole article, Yara. Throw tomatoes at him. He why? didn't read the whole article. Why did they? Why did they? Why nah, did nah, they? Nah, this is my why time. did they address them? Why nah, did they nah, agree with them as Jews? This is my time. Right. Do not interrupt me. This was my time. Yara, what are you doing, doing brother? No, give you can't do that. I Yara, I was on. I didn't realize. Yara, I was on. Give him his time you back. cannot do that, no, brother. Give him his time back. I didn't realize I had hit the. Uh, okay, I give him his time back, but um, please do not put tomatoes in the chat. Man, they let them throw tomatoes. They, no, man. because they fun, mess up man. the algorithm. You do not do that, oh, fam. Fun, okay. Don't yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Guys. 
Don't throw tomatoes in the side box. I don't want to have my people block y'all, man. Don't do that. <laughs> you put your bags Come of tomatoes on, away. You did not read that article with full comprehension, Yara. You are dishonest in scholarship. And that's why I've been saying all night you have failed to yield the historical uh, method and the anthropological method. You did not show any synthesization with your evidence that you provided. Yeah, you threw a bunch of sources out there. My job is to discredit the sources. And I'm discrediting the sources by showing you what they're saying. They say words, the words, the buzzwords being used in all of this is, here, let me pull my screen up here, um, Sarnetta. Uh, let me go back up. Let me pull this up right here. And I want to go here to my desktop here. Uh, let me pull this up, geez, I hope, because I had, I've been doing all his downloads, naming practices. Uh, okay, excuse me. All right, don't worry about it. We're not going to waste any more time with that. What go ahead, I stopped the clock. Go ahead, get oh, it. You stop the clock? Okay, guys. Um, so if you want to give a station identification, go right ahead, beloved. Let me get this. Okay, here we go right here. Time resumes. You got five minutes left. 5.15. Okay, thank you. I got, this is plenty of time to show um, how his information is very misleading. It's I don't see nothing showing, Chris. You ain't sharing nothing. I'm getting ready to share it right now. I'm All right, I got it. It's up and running. All right. All right. Okay. So what I was doing was I was just doing a lot of um, copying and um, just uh, doing a lot of sniping as he spoke. And... Um, what he was using here was he used Deuter I don't know this isn't his this, here it is right here. He used the book The Lost Tribes, a myth suggestion towards rewriting Hebrew history hardcover by Alan Gobby. And this is what it says. Israelite among American Negroes. These facts have peculiar significance with the presence of Judaism among American Negroes. That's what he said. Judaism. Judaism is a religious practice. This doesn't prove slaves on the boat, Yara. This, once again, misleading information. You did not synthesize it. All right. Then you use Ulysses Santa Maria, and it says it is well known 1,500 years before Islam. Judaism was present in Africa. It doesn't say Israelites were present in Africa. It doesn't say that. It doesn't teach that at all. It says Judaism was present in Africa. And we know Judaism was there because we have the Jews at Elephantine. We have the Moroccan Jews. We have the Maghreb Jews. None of them claim to be Israelites. Hell, I can't even find Israelites in the 12th, 11th, 13th, 14th, 15th, any of them centuries. That's a new people that come around probably what? 6th century BCE probably? Stop it. Let's go here. Albeit, I can't really see this too much. I'm going to enlarge it for the audience. And this is what it says. All right. And it says, Carl Peters, the founder of German East Africa, who was forced to resign from the German Imperial Service, accused of cruelty to the local population of who retired British South Africa. OK, so he probably participated in apartheid. And it says how absolutely Jewish is the type of this people. He didn't say they were Jews. He said they were the type of Jewish people. He says right here, how absolutely Jewish is this type of people? They have faces cut exactly like those of ancient Jews who live around Aden. And this is what you underline. Jews of the good old type. And even Jews came up with the same kind of comment in case of Sidney Mendel. It's, it's irrelevant. This is all irrelevant. He's dealing with Judaic and Semitic legends in this book. Where's a picture of an ancient Jew? If I show something like this, I want to show a picture of an ancient Jew. If I go to the walls at, elephant, at any um, Egyptian temple, at any Nubian or African temple, I'm going to show you black people being there. I'm going to show you them. Let's go to the next one. That makes absolutely no sense why you use that. Let's go to the next slide. This is your work. Watch this. This was funny. Barbot on Guinea. So as I showed you guys that the Portuguese were converting Africans right there in New Guinea as early as 1630. And he says, thence it is that the Fo Fole tribe of Judah reckoned 115 such towns with this precinct. Where's it at? Why didn't you show it? Where's the archaeological data? Where's the peer reviewed data for that, uh, Yara? You didn't show us any of that. What does this have to do with Israelites in America? Can you show me these people getting on them boats? Two minutes. Okay. The Africans who wrote the Bible. Oh, my God. I actually have this book. 
Everybody see me quote this book. This book is not advocating Jews. This book is not advocating that black people are in fact Israelites. This book is advocating that the that the that the religion that we find in the Bible, the stories that we find in the Bible are actually inspired by that of Egypt. That's what this whole book is speaking about. And the problem with this book, and I have it sitting right over there, and I'm going to show it to everybody, is that he doesn't source any of his information in that book. And this is why I have never shown anything of this book in 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 front of my in front of my national audience. He doesn't give any sources for any of it. And you call it African Hebrews before pre-colonial yeah. era. You never read this book. I know you haven't. I've read it and I know it's pseudo. I'm telling you all that is pseudo. Once again, this is speaking about Judaism. If it's talking about Noah's flood, we know that they're trying to draw their conclusions from what? From the biblical narrative, Deuteronomy 28 and all this other nonsense. Where was your evidence at tonight prior to you appealing to the authority of the people that share your doctrine? You never showed it, Yara. You never synthesized any of the information that you provided with that of Africans getting on them boats. All you did was stay in Africa trying to claim Africa for the Jews. And that is the enslavement of your mind. I am done. You are thoroughly refuted and rebutted. MVP out. Sa, so, please let me get some water. Okay, go get some water. Um, Yara, you got two minutes, that's all, to rebut what Chris had to say. You got two minutes. All right, brother, the time right. is on you. Again, let's do this again, people. And let us show y'all why Chris, you have to catch him because he's a very quick liar. Right? Let me know when you're ready. Hold on one second. Let's get it. Um, I want y'all to get y'all questions ready. Remember? Can you see my screen? Yes, I see it. Y'all could just come in and ask questions, not to come in to teach. All right. All right. Let me know when you're ready. All right. Let me let me show you. You got something. two minutes, so you want to get Chris to Chris has tried to miss okay. Chris has tried to mishmash both uh points of the argument. He'll go into a, a source that I bring out and say, see, these Gambians, did they come over on the boats? I never say anybody from Senegambia came over the boats. He asked the question, does Israelites come over on the boats? He was looking for the name Israelites, Israelites, Israelites. And he read the source himself that these people were known by many different names. He just read the source himself. Now watch this, people. Uh, can you see my screen, Senator? Yes, we see it. Let me show you. Let me show you why Chris is a complete liar, right? And show y'all what he says. This is why you have to follow this guy over and over again. Let's go back to this article right here, right? The story on a hated uh, recluse uh, uh, Jewish community. Listen to what they actually say, right? It says some of the people here believe in Muhammad, but the majority of idol worshippers wrote the nameless. Portuguese navigator. In this land, there are Jews known as Gauls. Where are Gauls located in Portugal? He said these Jews were known as Gauls. These are not people saying, oh, these Gauls are us or these Gauls came from us. Who converted the Gauls? If the Gauls are calling themselves Jews, who converted them? Not the Portuguese, because the Portuguese came and found them already saying that they're Gaul, that they're Jews. Right. And so then as the article continues where he says I was disingenuous, what the article says, especially the point that he says I didn't read, which I clearly read, which is why Chris is a liar. Right. I clearly read it. Right. It says right here, the most likely reason why the tribe didn't practice Hebrew traditions is because many Israelites were scattered and lost their culture and identity during the persecution. That's what the article says. That's what it says. All right. All right. Beautiful. beautiful. Johnny, he's out of here, man. All right. Beautiful presentation on both sides. And um, now we are down to the wire. Chris, do you have... Any question you would like to ask Yara? This is the fire round. I'm going to give y'all five minutes to go back and forth. Chris, you lead. Once you feel that the answer is done, 
you could tell Yara, I'm good on that and keep it moving. Yara got to follow your lead. He can't keep talking. Once you say I'm good, and it's the same way with Yara. He will have five minutes to question you. And once he say I'm good on that, you got to stop and let him ask another question. So, Chris, are you ready, brother? Or you want to go first, um, Yara? Yeah, it don't matter to me. All right. What you want, Chris? Yara can go first, yeah. All right, Yara, you got five minutes in this round, and you got to follow his lead, Chris. Once he say I'm good with the answer, you got to move on because it's only yeah. five minutes. All right, All right, so um, the time will start, y'all. This is just a question and answers. No showing screens, no sharing nothing. Let's go. Yeah. So my first question to Chris is that uh, you claim that there were no Israelite kingdoms in the tribe of Africa. I mean, in the West Coast of Africa, correct? That is correct. All right. So um, when we talk about, oh, thanks, Anna. So when we talk about uh, the soul tribes and the 115 towns, are you saying that those were not Jews or those were not Israelites? Because we know that the Bible tells us that the Jews or the people from Judah were Israelites. How do you claim that these people aren't Israelites? Okay. okay. Um, well, first of all, just because an author says that there were 115 time, 15 towns in this certain area of Africa, the one thing that I was looking forward for you to do is to prove it yielding the historical method. Did you show me a, did you show me did you show me the name of the town? Did well, you show I'm me asking, the, I'm asking questions here. So again what I'm asking, I'm trying to answer it for you. No, you answered it. You said no. So again, when I showed you two different sources. So are you saying that two different sources created at the same time by two different authors saying mm -hmm. that these people in the tribe who were the sole tribe of Judah in these 115 towns were incorrect in their information? Do you have a source that says that's false? I don't I'm not going to sit here and do the work for you. The bottom line is you never show these people. I asked, I I asked you to answer the question. I asked you. You're not no, answering they were my wrong. question. They were wrong. I asked you. Okay, you said they were they wrong. Said they do you were have wrong. a source? They do you no, have you a source? I don't need a source to yes, tell you, you that do, they were wrong. Because if you don't have a source to say that they were wrong, then you just made it up. No, that's incorrect, and I'm going to explain to you why. No, you, Can I explain it, why? You can't just say. Yeah, go right ahead. I'll let you explain. Okay. First yeah, of all, I did not know you did not enter your sources to me but prior to this debate. So I did not know what you were going to use so I can give a counterclaim to the source that you used. So you offered, you brought these sources. So, so, so then your answer should be you don't know. Wait a minute, Chris. Oh, you wow. just, but, but wait a minute. So then your answer simply should be you don't know if it's incorrect or not. So how can you make a conclusion if you weren't able to vet my sources? Because, first of all, there were no tribes calling themselves Judah, Israel, Gad, any time in the um, in the Levant area from the first millennium B.C.E. all the way until the sixth century B.C.E. Who's arguing? Who's anywhere. arguing that? So even after that, because these tribes, most of their history that they're given, they're not even going beyond the sixth century C.E. They're just telling you they're descended from these people called Israelites. So even well, if I'm it goes sorry, back I thought the name on. of the debate if was if Israelites back, in America. Even if it goes back to, no, I'm talking about the question that I asked you. Even if it goes back to 600 CE or 600 AD or 600 BCE, whichever 600 you want to pick, they still refer to themselves as Israelites. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Simple okay. as that. So how do you deny it? Wow. If you haven't had time to vet the sources, how can you make a scholarly conclusion that this is not that the information that I presented tonight is incorrect? Um, I, you know what? You know what? I can agree with you that it's probably not incorrect. But the thing is that I'm going to disagree the with next you. Question. Hold on. Hold on. You answer my question. Next you question. You said, it, you said it wasn't incorrect. No, you next have question. to let me finish. And that's very inappropriate. Okay, I, I, that's right. Okay, you got two Thank minutes. You. I apologize. Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. All the information that you were vetting and the sources that you were vetting were irrelevant to the topic tonight. What do the 115 cities, whatever it is in Africa that this author claimed, have to do with the name of our debate, Yara? You well, have to now show, hold on, let me finish answering the question. Questions, though? No, no, I did not. I'm okay, making, I'm making, I'm, I'm taking a position here. It okay. was irrelevant to the conversation. It was irrelevant. You debunk okay. yourself. You now have to so show. Is that my time or is that his time to respond? Hold on, son. Is that my time or is that his time to respond? There's my answer for you. No, brother. You got the whole five minutes to question him. And okay. you let him say no. I got an answer. Once he answered it, okay. you so, should have stopped him and said no. I'm moving okay, on. So I got it. So again, so again, 
Chris, how do you suppose that people on the west coast of Africa got to the Americas and during the transatlantic slave trade? The people on the west coast of Africa got to America by way of slavery, by the boats, of course. By the right? boats. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So if they got to the by the way of boats, are you emphatically saying that there's no historical reference, uh, anthropological uh, information, historical records that I did show you tonight that slaves weren't taken from those ship from those areas, especially we know from Senegambia, where I just showed you the source, where we know historically that's where the largest amount of slaves were taken from. Over four million were taken from the Senegambia region to the Americas. Are you postulating that there was no way anyone identifying themselves as a Jew made it on a slave ship? You can answer the question, Chris. Okay. Um, that's once again, that's a very misleading question because you didn't give any numbers for the slave trade tonight. As a matter of fact, you didn't mention anything and it was all irrelevant to the debate. You were supposed to show the connection between what you presented and slavery. What you were doing is showing people practice. And that's why I read over all your slides. They mentioned the word Jew. No Israelite, if they ever existed, called themselves a Jew. Whoa. The Romans, the, the excuse me. Whoa. I, I think I'm done here, Sunday. All right, Whoa. Chris, it's on you. Whoa. You got five minutes in this round. I'm gonna state the rules the same way I did with Yara. You can you can um fire blast them for five minutes. If you if you satisfy with the answer, you can move on. You can say, brother, I'm good, and keep it moving. All right. Once you say I'm good, keep it moving. He got to respect your time because this is your five minutes time. Time will start when you're ready. Okay, um, you mentioned the Akan God in Yame, and you um, mentioned Joseph J. Williams' book in which he said that in Yame was the equivalent to the Hebrew God. Can you get? Can you show me your methodology into determining determining what Joseph J. Williams said was true? Yeah, Joseph J. Williams postulated in that statement that you uh, just butchered that basically he did a linguistic study, and I showed you that in my slide. He did a linguistic study that says he can postulate that the term in Yame is their term from God, which is a God above, a creator, a God above all gods, which is what the Hebrew Bible says, that we have a God and worship a God. Of okay, all thank gods. you. That's your answer. You Actually, you just told a lie. The slide you showed said that it was the equivalent of Yahweh, and everybody saw that. Um, can That's you show exactly me what I the said. Akan people? Can you show me the Akan people um, mentioning David, Solomon, Moses, or any of those, um, any of the biblical narratives in their cosmology? No, they don't necessarily have to do that in order for them to be Israelites. So how do you prove? See, how do you prove with the anthropological method? How do you prove with the study of anthropolo anthropology that they are in fact Israelites? Because based on your source and your information tonight that you gave, you said Israelites, we can place them at around the time of 600 CE. Is that what you said? So Excuse even if we go me. back to the time, time I don't of think six, you, I, that's good. On. I don't think you hold heard on. my question. I heard your question. I Let asked, me finish answering. You're mentioning 600 can I finish answering my question? No, can I I'm controlling my, my clock question? here. No. I can asked I you a simple question. Nah, you got to he, Y'all right. You got to let he, If no. he says stop, you got to stop, brother. He got to okay, stop. This is five minutes. He can't stop me in the middle of an answer, though. I asked, no, you're mentioning 600 BCE. I asked you a simple question. Can I ask? And I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you again. All right. In the Akan cosmology, can you show me anywhere where they mention any of the biblical um, patriarchs in the Akan cosmology, including their patriarchal narratives? Can you show me that? That's not the question you asked me. You rephrase it, but I'll answer it anyway. Sure. But, but, but again, this is again, here's your problem with that. Right. Because we know in every African cosmology, they have heroes. We know in every African cosmology, they have people. So if we're looking for David and Moses and different things, we know you again, it says you show these different people that we don't have to show David. We don't have to show Solomon, because if you're saying that these people are what 
eponymous ancestors. They're just eponymous ancestors. It has nothing to do. Okay, so thank you. It has Yabla. nothing to do you with just that. It. it has you just nothing to do with that. that you don't have to show that. I don't have you to show just it. admit it. Excuse me, I'm talking. Be professional here, bro. I'm being very professional. You just admit it that you don't have to show answer. it. That's your answer. Thank you. No, I don't okay, have to show cool. it. Okay, cool. Can you give me the Akan equivalent to King David, please? Why would they be an Akan equivalent to King David? Because how can they be Hebrews if they don't even know who their own first king was? Because, again, when we talk about uh, the Akan claiming that they came from the Aruba tribe, right? Most of them. Uh, wow, the they Akan come from the Yoruba? That's new to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, a lot of them claim Yoruba ancestry, right, and connection with them, that they came from the Levant area. A lot of them came from the Levant area into that region. They don't have to claim a, a connection with King David, but this is what they have to claim a connection with, right? Their understanding of what of, of who King David was to a degree. They don't have to be literal descendants. And this is what you guys will understand about what an Israelite is. We see throughout the scriptures, people okay, never, thank you, who thank weren't. You. I'm not about to talk about it. We're not about to have, have a Bible study born. Let me here. finish. People who do not that's have fine. blood. I said born. that's fine. That's a good enough people answer. Who don't have, no, it's not. Excuse hey, me. Nah, he said it's good. Y'all remember I told you when you're going to move man. on, he got to move on. I said you the same thing. able to finish my question. No, but if he's satisfied with it, with the answer, he can move on. I'm not okay, satisfied so, with the so answer. Real quick, you don't have to answer the question. Lineage to King David to be an Yo, Sai, come on, man. We got to do something about this here. Bro. We ain't got to do it. nothing. Continue. Go ahead, go ahead. Come on, y'all. You're doing it. good. You can't let him get to you, brother. You're not getting to me. I'm claim, just answering the question. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. The Yoruba people claim that, that there was a certain queen that they descend from, mainly Queen of Sheba. And mm -hmm. they say that they have her grave, and that grave is located on the west coast of Africa. How could mm -hmm. that be when uh, Queen of Sheba was on the west coast, I mean, on, in Ethiopia? Can you please give me the study where they tested that grave site that they have in where they make where they make that claim that they have the queen of Sheba. Can you please give me the study on that, please? Why would they have why would they have to produce an anthropological study on that? Okay, so you're saying that they don't need to use anthropology. No, that's not what I said. Claims. I said why do you, why why would you ask for an anthropological study for West Africans? For West Africans who didn't have that type of uh, who didn't have that type of because that's uh, essentially uh, what we've been speaking uh, uh, about. Education the study. Time. No, we're not talking. We have not been talking about anthropology. Okay, studies. and that is time. Yeah. All exactly. right, time. What I would like to do, um, I'm gonna open up the floodgates. Um, Yara, here's the deal. So you won't feel like you've been cheated. I said when you ask Chris Harris a question, if you feel that you're satisfied with it, you can move on. He ain't got to stop your time. The same way with Chris Harris. If he feel that he's satisfied with your answer, he can stop you and say, i will better move on. Because it's his time to get as much as questions out as he can within five I, minutes. I heard you. I heard That's you. That's also both of y'all doing that. great. It's a great debate with both of y'all. Yeah, I knew that. You think I'm going to um, Chris, I'm gonna just let Chris keep talking for five minutes straight? <laughs> All right, so family, here we go. Y'all can that. come on in. Remember, on, turn on your cameras if you have a question. The link is inside of the chat. Yara. Yeah, right. <laughs> <Yeah, right. laughs> there you go, man. Show that love for each other, bro. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all right, go back like how many That's what this is about. It's only debating information, man. That's it, number information. All right, we got the first guest in the building. Peace and black power to you, my brother Logic. What's happening, man? Do you have a question? Yes, sir. I got um so I have a specific question for Yara and then I have a question for both of them. All right, let's um, go. To Yara, um, when you say that the yes, Akan work for God and Yahweh are the same, the Akan have a senior God that doesn't interact with humans. Are you saying that is the same God as Yahweh? And to both no, of I'm you saying that they had no no, no, I'm saying that I'm sorry, did you finish your question? I got a delay. You got a delay. That was a question for you, and then I had one for okay. both of y'all. Well, that, that, that's a misconception in the Akon uh, uh cosmology when they say they have a god that doesn't interact with them, right? Because honestly, what you what you see uh even in the in the is in the Israelite paradigm is almost the same thing, right? Because what you see is you see a god dealing with men. And then the men dealing with the people or dealing with women and dealing with the people. Right. So even in the Akon religion, you see in Yame dealing, dealing with various different uh, uh, manifestations that come from him. He is the creator. 
So everything that comes out of him is the essence of him. So when people say he doesn't he doesn't deal with uh, uh, the people of the land or the Akon people, that's sort of a misconception. He deals with them through his, their different manifestations or the different people that he created or, or deities that come out of him. That's still a connection to that deity. Okay. I well, appreciate they, they, the question. That's a good question. No problem. And to both of you, can you explain who the crypto Jews were and what crypto Judaism is? Great question. And that's my last No, I'm not too familiar with the crypto Jews. I think they were merchants that traveled as the little bit I do know about them, that they were merchants that traveled to the central interiors of um, Africa. Um, it doesn't really mention their race or anything. So, no, I'm not too familiar with them. No. There was sort of uh, crypto Jews. There were sort of uh, people um, who who claimed to have Jewish ancestry, but were sort of hiding, uh, uh, hiding that for fear of persecution. And then being able to do business and different things like that. So you have what they call uh, these crypto or cryptic, cryptic Jews um, was sort of the understanding. The brothers, I can't hear the brother speaking. No, no, that's it. That was the question. Um, we will move on. All right, Jay, Jason, what's up, man? Let's Nothing go. Much, but, uh, I got a question for Yara. So, okay. So question is, if we talk about... The Judaic belief is Abrahamic belief system. Talk about Israelites, right? Mm -hmm. So, why don't we just track the mythology that leads you out of Africa into Syria, northern Syria, to be specific? What do you mean with which? What, what mythology are are you speaking so, of specifically? So, so your first, like your reference of Yah, El, things like that, come from northern Syria. So, my question is. Why, why the, why are you saying, I guess the, the thing that you're saying is when you said that the Akan people, um, and were you, uh, were you Ruba and they say that they're Israelites, technically, that means they're non African. So that, that's what I'm saying. So the belief is non African. The people who made it is non African. That's what I'm well, saying. Oh, okay, I, I kind of get what you're saying. Well, that's not a position that I take. I never postulate throughout this entire debate or any debate or information I bring out that these people were not Africans. Well, I, I, well, never, I never bring, I never postulate that. But you I said that they were. It, oh, I was saying, so, but you said that they were Israelites, right? Yes, and I believe Israelites inherently are African people. They are not. Well, I mean, that's that's a debate you might want to uh, uh, get with Sonnet in half with me. But these people are actually Africans. We can go back as far as uh, uh, 9,000 to 12,000 BCE and deal with the Natufians coming out of Africa and into the Levant region. We have African people there. So we know they've been in these areas. Africans have been traveling in and out of the Levant region, especially those included in the Bantu expansion. We can follow that. We can trace that. So these people inherently, I agree, are Africans. I believe uh, mankind started in what is called Africa today or the on the continent of Africa, migrated into areas of what we call the ancient Near East and then back migrated back into Africa. I'm not an Israelite that takes that paradigm that Israelites are not Africans. All right. Um, Jason, I can see that you've been influenced by some crazy ass Israelites. And number one, <laughs> and number one, we don't care if you say that the Israelites are not African. We've been here before some goddamn Israelites. That's number right. one. Right. So we've been here. We started civilization. We created all that. So you don't get no points by trying to say, no, they are not Israelite, as though we no. mad because they're not Israelite. We, we, we created civilization. We brought civilization to the world. Thank you, brother. Let me that, move forward. That wasn't, my, get, that wasn't um, my position. Oh, that's not your position. Yeah, that okay, wasn't my, my position. My, okay, I was just bad. saying I just that like to defend my, my yeah, hood, yeah. you know, Africa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was all. just saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was just saying that the yes. that the that the origin of the of that belief system of the Israelite Judaic Abrahamic belief system okay. originates outside of Africa. And so when he said that those that the people were Israelites, Chris, you can answer it too now if you right? want to. You can address. I was some saying of it that. Too. I was just saying that on the technicality, on the historical reference, he was saying that the Akan people were not African. Well, I was. Okay. Saying, I, I don't. I, me personally, I don't think that the Judaic faith 
um, the origin of it is, in fact, with a group of uh, people that call themselves the Israelites. As a matter of fact, most of the origins of the Jewish faith are, in fact, with a group of people that we call Canaanites. If we look and at the Mari were, text, okay, the Mar if we look at the Mari text that go back to the 12th century BCE, what we see is stories of El and Baal, and we see stories of Yom, and we can see the synchronization of the text. Mm -hmm. These texts and these gods and these stories already existed. We could see the Pesach right there amongst these Canaanite people. But before it got to them, where was it at prior to that? We can go mm -hmm. backwards. Then we go back and we go back to Egypt. It's it's silly to think that they created. It's silly Ooh, to think that wait. they created these okay. religions. One second, let me land my let me park my car. Okay, I got you. I got you. Let me park my car over here. The problem that I have with people in the Israelite postulation or uh, Israelite belief is simply you think that their religion was given to them by a God. No, their religion was a development of um, texts over the time. Now, if Egypt was an empire, this ruling empire that ruled, let's say, um, from the 18th dynastic period all the way to the 21st dynastic period, that's a period of almost, what, 500 years, right? So we have this period of 500 years in the um, the best religion or the greatest religion that we see over there in that area was the Egyptian temples. We don't see any Israelite temple anywhere. So unfortunately, we can see that these people who were in the land of Canaan or the Levant area already had these stories existing in their narrative before any Bible was written. The Bible is All right. And well, let, me, okay, let me follow up with to, that brother real okay. quick. Let me follow up with that because that's a great question he posed. And I appreciate him for that question. Okay. Well, this is where Chris fails, right? Because we can go back to 800 BCE before the time Chris talks about 600 CE or BCE when Israelites were formulated. We can go back to 800 BCE at least and talk about the Elephantine Jews. We know that how they contacted, got in contact with King Darius, right? And said, listen, let us build us a temple. Let us build us a synagogue in Alexandria or in Elephantine. So we know that Elephantine Jews existed in Africa, my brother. So when Chris says that there's no way that that's possible, that's false information. This is why, brother, you should be paying more attention to truthful understanding from the Israelite paradigm and what we teach versus somebody who's a fly by night off the handle, high flying <laughs> rhetoric, yellow shirt wearing uh sideways baseball. I'm sorry, what year were the elephantine Jews? Who, who, love, who loves in the right, what year were the elephantine Jews, Jews writing? You said what? What year were the elephantine Jews writing? I didn't say the elephantine Jews are writing, I said, but we have we know that the elephantine Jews their migration out of Israel was between 800 to 600 BCE going into Alexandria. In the no, that's in the fifth century BCE. Okay, well, so that's not the okay, fifth century BCE. Fifth, Would you like for me to show BCE. you that? Give us the source. Yeah. Give us yeah. the source. Okay, right jstore.org. Um, here source. it is. It's and I'll right show here. You. Okay, it's uh, becoming. Here it is right here. I pulled uh -huh. it up real fast because I know the elephant. If you're dealing with the Persian period, you have to start at the sixth century BCE. When you deal with the Persian period, you have to deal with the sixth century BCE. Uh, you can't start it in the eighth century BCE because the Assyrians were in power at this time in the area. That's uh, a this, lie. Is where you, this is where it's you become, fail, Chris. In diaspora <laughs> Jews behind the story of Elephantine. It's right there. Let's deal with it. All right. Elephantine. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on, brothers. We got to continue with the. Yeah, um, I just, guess, I just wanted to. I just wanted to close out and just say, um, yeah, Thank yeah, you, I man. yeah, I just want to understand where both of y'all are coming from. And I was just saying that from a um, just from the historical timeline perspective and looking at the artifacts with things that's been left behind at the yet before you have your Canaanites, you have your Uyghuric, your Uyghuric people that's in northern Syria. That that's All why right, you that's have your brother because yeah. you only posted so a question. Yeah, yeah, so I was just saying that that. So that's the point I was making there. I just wanted right, to let good. Yeah. Thank so, you. Thank you, yeah. young man, for coming in, man. So go study Africa. Go study the African, man. Go study Africa, brother. <laughs> go study Africa so you don't get lost, man. You know, oh, I'm I'm all about Africa. That's all I'm saying. I'm go. saying good yeah, brother. I'm, good brother. Yeah. Let's um, move yeah. on over to Brother Gideon, man. Gideon, you on the floor, you on the call, brother. Uh, Shalom, peace, uh, peace, peace, everybody. Listen, I want to give all praise to the most high and only Yahshua Hamashiach. Uh, first shout out to my brother, Elder Yara. You know, uh, shout out to you, you know, yeah, but you, you straight dealt with that, man, like he's supposed to. Uh, I want, I want to, I have a couple of questions for Chris. Uh, 
Chris, do do you know what what a Jew is and an Israelite and the difference? Yeah, um, Jews can be anybody who practiced a religion or lived in the ancient region of uh, Judea. It could be an any it could be any group of people. So when the what Greeks and the excuse me when the Greeks and the Romans was using that term, anybody who lived in that area could have been a Jew. It then, tra it then and then it then it, excuse me it then takes over a transformative um what's the um excuse me the way you Jew is used today it becomes somewhat of a religious identity as it's used today. The text that Yara was using was clearly saying Jew. No, no, no. I ain't talking about what, what Yara said. So okay, yeah. so that's what you say. What a Jew? What is an Israelite? An Israelite never existed. Okay, now. I, I'm, I'm just going to finish this up with a statement, si, and, and, and this is what I kind of want to say to to you two and the listening people. It's like, man, to, to you got, like, Sai, all right, you were stooped, a person was stooped so low, and you have stooped so low in your understanding and in your able, your, your, your ability to comprehend certain Hey, Gideon, things. hold on. Hold your, hold your, hold your, hold your hold water on, real hold quick. On, hold on, hold no, on, just hold on. Hold your water one second. Stop. I'm going to let you I'm go. Talking. I'm going to let you rock out. Gideon, hold your water for one second. Sonetta, see that guy, Jeremiah Judah? Get him up out of here. I ain't interested in talking to him. Adios. I'm not, hey, he already called I'm me to come on the show, bro. I already, I already spoke show. to him. Chris, I already right. spoke to him. Don't be scared. No, be quiet, Judah. Stop. What he's going to do is he's just going to ask um, um, Elder Yara a question, not you. Okay, he ain't going to he ain't going to, uh, um, you know, come ask you nothing. All right, so that's okay. why I let him in. So go ahead. Um, um, what you were saying, take it from the T.O.P. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. So si, basically, bro, I just want to say this to you and the listening audience real quick before I finish uh, showing the, the, the holes in, in uh, Chris's argument. So si, when you're saying when we say we're Israelites, and then you retort, or people say, nah, we African, y'all should be African. Let me show you how, how it, it really don't make sense when you really think about it. That's like if we were to say we are Texans or we are New Yorkers, and y'all argument will always be, no, we Americans. Like, that that doesn't make any sense. Like, when, when you're saying we're Africans, you're speaking to a, a, a wide base. When we're saying we're Israelites, we're saying we're a specific group within that wide base. Now back to Chris. Chris, do you know when was the first time the Portuguese entered into Ghana or West Africa? What year? Around 1415 CE. Okay, it's actually a little later when the scorers came, they found gold. More like 1475. Here, I, that's incorrect 15. because hold on, let me right. show you a source. No, I would agree right with you. Here. No, you, you but just said it's a little later. Right. That was incorrect. It's a, right, it's you a little late, but right I would give you that. I would no, give you that. No, you weren't. Not let my me point. show the source. That is the when point. Was the you first asked time question. that they were in Ethiopia. Excuse me. Excuse me. You asked a question, and I want to give a source here. All right. Whoa. All right. You cut this question off, though. All right. Hey, so, yo, whoever's not um, talking, y'all got to be quiet, man. Let this brother deal with him. Let Chris yeah, deal with hey, the brother talking. Yeah, All hey, right. fam. We don't need side, got, uh, like, side so people here talking. it is right here. In this book, this is a documented history of the Portuguese in West Africa starting from 1415 to 1670. That does not mean that the Portuguese automatically entered into Africa um, in 1415, this is when they begin to make their incursions into West Africa and they begin writing about it. Anybody can um, email me about this book and you can see what they were witnessing on the West Coast of Africa, both religiously, economically and civilly. Also, we know the Portuguese were dealing with the kingdom of the Congo earlier than that. But that is Central Africa. We are dealing with West Africa when they begin to keep a documented history about their incursions into this Okay, area. can you show us that source when they were dealing with the Congo when? The Congo was a little bit earlier. Okay, and can you, can you read show about us the, the source Congo? Hold on, hold on. And by the way, that's not a source, Chris. That's a book. Um, sir, these are our primary okay. sources and written documents of people writing to the king of Portugal explaining what it is that they see 
in West Africa and, and so what, what their accomplishments do as a are in the trade who, who, who routes are I'm sorry. Yeah, that, is sauce, that is a sauce, That is a sauce. Not the book. No, it is a it's source. It's a sauce, Gideon. No, it, it's just a book. Kasab, what will happen is no, you, see, will have, you will have real <laughs> juvenile. Gideon, it's, it's a source, no, Gideon. Listen, no, Chai, no, no, you're not understanding. Yeah, hold on, That's sir, not a primary source. Because okay. behind that, right. you can have real dubious sources speaking of them being there 14, 15. I'm aware of that. But the reason why I say 1475 is that's when I have the earliest documented evidence of them being in West Africa. So that's why I told him I would give him that 1415. Although he did not show the source, he just showed the cover of a book. Just like when Yawa was breaking down how a Spanish explorer saw Jews in Africa and Chris, as his rebuttal, used the author's preponderance or, 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 or wondering why they were Jews there. That's not a source, Chris. That's not a rebuttal. That's the author trying to explain away a primary source. You guys do that all the time in this week, man. So, all Chris, right. my question to you, and I'm going to fall point, back. My, my question to you, and I'm going to fall back. If the first documented evidence of Portuguese being in Ethiopia and in West Africa is the middle of the 15th century, what do you say to the sources of the Israelites being in West Africa not only by other early traveling Europeans, but Arab sources. What do you say to that? Because you say they're converts by Portuguese. So if they are there before the Portuguese... Uh, just ask your question, so brother, so we can move forward. All right, Chris, yeah, you got it? it? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, um, once again, it's just a lot of denial of the fact that the Portuguese had a lot to do with the conversions and also the Christians had a lot to do with the conversions. There's just a lot of um, um, misinformation being given out by the Hebrews. Like he continuously tried to delineate between Israelites and Jews. And when I gave him an honest answer and an educated answer, what then he then tried to do is uh, create a narrative that just didn't even you exist. Didn't exist. Yo, yo, get in. You can't talk. Oh. Get in, get in. That's it. That's it, brother. Jesus Christ. All right. I think I've, I think I've answered enough. Uh, All right. Let's move on. We're going down the line. We got Judah next, and then we got um, Yasha behind him. Um, Judah, you on the call. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, great debate, you two. Don't to put me in the queue. Oh, yeah, you in the queue, uh, brother. I'm, I'm coming up to you as y'all enter into the room. I'm going right down the line. So go ahead, brother. Um, Judah, you in there. Hey, I won't be long with it. Great debate, Eliara. Great debate, Chris. Um, you know, I don't. I, you know, I'm just here to congrat congrat uh, congratulate you, brothers. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, what I mean, no hate. I'm not here to put nobody on trial. But I do have a question for Chris. Not that's not interrogation. I just want to ask because he said something and I was kind of confused. He said, "All right, all right, just real quick." He you said um, the Portuguese or the Europeans came to West Africa and they converted African slaves. Yes. Who are these African slaves today? <laughs> They would be called, they will have what you call a Luso African identity. And Tudor Parfit brought that up in his book. And what happened is I have, let me do it. Let me pull a source real quick. Let me pull a source real quick for you guys here. Um, yeah, let me get this up for you real quick. Go ahead, Judah. Let everybody know why you're asking me that oh, question. <laughs> Well, because 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 Africans were never enslaved in their own land, we were enslaved. So I'm kind of confused. Are you saying that we are the converted enslaved Africans? Because Africans were never enslaved. And I'm you know sorry, I, mean? I, I don't. African, you... No, I'm sorry that there were never any Israelites on the west coast of Africa. You would have to first prove okay. that and establish. Here's what I'm saying: you would ha first have to establish that. What you guys are doing is running to the word Jew when we know that there were black Jews because Jews were converted. Black Africans were converted. I'm trying to pull a source so I can show you this. I did a, a source on the um, Lakondo Africans and the Lakondo Jews, etc. And I, excuse me, I began to explain when and why they begin to, um, when and why they begin to um, convert. All right. So let me hear, let me pull it here and um, well, go ahead. Why are you pulling it up? Uh, where, where are they right now today? 
they're still there. They're still they're still there in their communities as the, as their current location. I can't give you that right now. No, I can't give you that right now. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> All I didn't right, know. we're gonna move on. Uh, we got Philip up in the building. Philip, the call. You on the call, brother? We can't hear you, Philip. Philip, we cannot hear you. Yeah, peace to the chat. You hear me now? Yes, we got you, brother. Yeah, okay, cool. Sorry. Peace to the chat. I think it was a very good debate. Great debate, you know. I have my take on who won the debate, but I'm not going to say. <laughs> um, I have a question, right? Uh, now, let's assume that the Hebrews did get into West Africa about 70, maybe 100 AD, right? After the fall in uh, Jerusalem. Uh, today, what would they have to prove? Can either debaters, Brother Chris or Brother Yara, give me about two or three items that they would have to prove, that they can use to prove that indeed that they were Hebrews who came from Jerusalem? And if you can identify those two or three items, uh, after about, what, 1,500 years or so or more, is it not possible that they could have lost the, their, their true identity by assimilation? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a resounding no. And here's why. According to the biblical narrative, Hebrews... All right, hold on, Chris. Okay. Before y'all do anything, family, I need y'all to thumb this video up. Y'all know this was a great debate. Thumb the goddamn video up. It's a free button. Like the video. Thumb up the video. All right, go ahead, Chris. Okay. Now I forgot where I was getting ready to go with this one at. But um, I, I was hoping that the guys would come on here and address the debate at hand. I think this brother is trying to do that. And he was saying that they forgot who they were by assimilation. Well, if they were assimilating, that means that their women were sleeping with African men. Am I correct? So them as, with their women sleeping with African men, the Bible, one, teaches that it goes through the seed of the father. So there was no assimilation. It was, in fact, a race being genetically wiped out with the African male. You would have to say that and you would have to agree with that. So that's just a, that's just me saying that. But according to the biblical narrative, you guys always had your prophets. You guys always carried your text. This is why the Talmud was put together. The Talmud was put together so that you guys didn't forget who you were. So let's look at 70 AD, 70 AD, which they said where uh, that uh, guy, Joseph, not Joseph Williams, but R Rudolph Windsor said that they fled into Africa, West Africa here. Um, there's nowhere in Josephus, in Josephus book, where he says that they fled into Africa. Rudolf Windsor made that up. He actually made that up. They actually went north into a place called Pella. Here's the problem with that entire position of them fleeing into Africa. Egypt was controlled by the Romans at that time. So their only doorway into, into Africa would be through Egypt. All right. So the Hebrew is just a mythology. I don't care what anybody says on this platform. I stand on it. It's just a mythology. It never existed. No man named Abraham ever existed. No man named David or Solomon ever existed. All right. So you guys never went into West Africa. You guys have to do the work and show that. And what you guys do is pull from mainly two books, Babylon 10 book two and the Bible, Deuteronomy 28, the 28th chapter. I want to say this in closing. And, I, and I'm going to be very sincere about this. OK, um, there has never these people have never existed. And when you say that they somehow um, assimilated and they just forgot who they were. So you mean to tell me they've been assimilating with everybody, the Canaanites. They've been assimilating with the Egyptians. They've been assimilating with the Babylonians. They've been assimilating with the Greeks. They've been assimilating with the Romans. They've been assimilating with the Persians. And all of a sudden we get to Africa and they just change their language. They just change their cosmology. They just change their patriarchal narrative. They no longer talking about Torah. As a matter of fact, we're seeing things like Oshun, Ogun. We're seeing things like Legba. We're seeing all these different traditions. And look at what you guys have to do to make this narrative fit. 
We're literally playing semantics with the word Jew and Israelite, but nobody can show me any group of people in the first millennium BCE calling themselves Israelites. You can't find it. It's not there. When I was with the Torah Knights, Judah was saying, tell you, Chris was arguably the most talented brother when it came to history. I told him, I can't find it. I'm out. Simple as that. I'm done. All right. Um, moving right along, Black Jesus Minister, it's on you. The call is on you, brother. What's happening? Turn your camera on. Uh, well, I'm, 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 I'm in the dark right now, but uh, I think you okay. can a little right. bit. Though, so yeah, I'll turn your camera you back off. Put your clothes on, Black Jesus. <laughs> hey, real quick, son. Let, hey. let me address what Chris just said, okay? Okay. Um, first of all, um, I appreciate the brother's question because he, he, he never answers, right? Um, of course, I showed clearly in this debate where there were Jews where Chris wants to make everybody think that Jew had nothing to do with the term Israelite. That's his whole argument. That's his whole fighting stance, that Jew has nothing to do with the term Israelite, right? This is false. We know this is not true. He keeps telling you there's no such thing as an Israelite. But we can go through several sources of people claiming to be Israelites, throughout antiquity and for him to completely to continue to say that this is that, that that this is something that was made up this his he should be discarded to the trash pile so here's the question the answer to the brothers questions we know that in 1492 a very prominent year right before the portuguese really began the slave trade we know that eskia muhammad was in the west coast of africa persecuting Jews, threatening them, saying, look, you Jews who hold Israelite traditions, no one is to do business with you. No one is to trade with you. No one is to uh, 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 give you a leg up. And for that, many Jews hid themselves. This is why I brought up the brother uh, Hadara, uh, who was the records keeper uh, uh, in Timbuktu. He's holding Hebrew manuscripts to this very day from on the west coast of Africa. And Chris says that these people don't exist. They never existed. You can't simply come to these discussions and these debates and say, because I don't want to agree with the information that's out there, then I can just say whatever it is I choose to say. That's false. He can't do that. So again, brother, we know that the lingua franca in 1492 at the time was Arabic. And we have evidence, which I showed tonight, Israelites, Hebrews, Jews writing in Arabic, keeping their Hebrew traditions. I showed you evidence of grave sites, right? He keeps saying you needed to show me a picture of an ancient Israelite. Did y'all hear Chris say that? Show me a picture of an ancient Israelite in West Africa. This is what he actually said. When we know Dr. James Smalls himself has done presentations on the HOK showing ancient Israelites, showing the difference between the Assyrians who he said were white and then the nappy head uh, Israel with their beady hair. You were there, Sarnetta. You know that's what James Small, Professor James Small postulates. So how do you allow Chris to be your tank, your fighter, your one of your champions, and he disagrees clearly with James, Dr. James Smalls? He says he has the audacity to come on here and say what Dr. James Smalls has to say is trash because he doesn't agree with it? That's not proper scholarship. It's disingenuous, and we need to you, you need to challenge him on that. Reggie knows what Dr. That Dr. Small says this. All right. Please, Senator, can I get one more? just because the first part of my question All was right, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. That was that was a, a beautiful, beautiful tactic, Elder Yara. <laughs> By no means, Chris have never disrespected our elder, Professor James Smalls. He have never done that, brother. He so dismissed come on, his man. information. No, I he don't never... have to agree with him, but he would no. never disrespect so he him says, in that. If he, say, if he says, if on, he says Israelites on. never hold on, if he says Israelites never existed. Then by default, he's calling Dr. James Smalls a liar. No, he's not, brother. Come on, man. What Stop that doing mean? that, brother. Stop, what does it mean? Man. 
That's a that's one of them tricks that y'all do, man. Stop no, that. No, 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 stop caping. Yo, folks. my man, my man, you're not talking. You can't be talking. But that's not what he said. He, you ain't hear him mention Professor Smalls not one time. And if that's the case, I'm Dr. James. But look, look, if that's the case, then we all might as well say we all dis disrespected Professor James Smalls. Oh, I don't got no problem. Oh, we agree with him, Arsene. Nah, you don't agree with everything he says. Stop it, man. Come on, man. But, Stop but, the nonsense. But I'm, I'm just saying everything, but on this JJ, point, JJ, agree JJ with you shouldn't be talking. Nobody should be talking yeah. except me and Yara. Yeah, but right I'm now. Dr. James Small. And, and, and right, shout out bad, to Dr. Bro. James Small. I do respect his scholarship. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Um, Philip, go yeah. ahead. One last yeah. question, brother. Yeah, yeah because the first, part, the first part of my question was, now, after so many years, if the, uh, he, the Hebrews who went into to, uh, West Africa, today now, what would they have to show? Is there anything that they have to show definitively to say, well, okay, this says that we or people who came from Jerusalem or Israel um, into West Africa. Can you show me, give me one or two or three things quickly that would say one, two, three. Oh, we know that there were Israelites on the west coast of Africa, especially in the in the Senike, especially the Senike tribe, right? The Senike tribe were practicing eight day circumcision. That only comes from the Bible. They'll make the argument and say, "Well, everybody practiced circumcision." No, everybody didn't practice eight day circumcision. Mm -hmm. That is a clear identifier with the Hebraic faith. They also kept the Sabbath, right? Specifically, the Sabbath day. Right. That is an Israelite tradition. Right. So, again, when we see there's two things right there, we also we also know they had the same type of marriage customs. Right. So when we talk about the material culture of these people, we know that they existed. We know that they have the clear similarities. We know that they almost mimicked each other. We see some of these same things even in the icon culture. They had very similar, uh, very large, heavy. Hey, let's try to make it quick, um, y'all, Ross, because we uh, got a yeah. lot so, of people that want to get so, in. And so again, we want y'all to close this thing out. Thanks for the answer. Thanks for the. Uh, All right, thank you, Philip. Y'all can stay in there, looking in, look in. All right, Black Jesus, you on the call, man? Let's go, brother. All yeah. the questions, questions, Black All Jesus. All the questions. That's it. And, and, yeah. and these and these questions is about the debate, and I want you to answer these questions. Show my screen, son. Two questions. Show my screen. Now, everybody's looking at the book by another founder of the conscious community, the great Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinen, Dr. Ben. And the title of his book, and Chris, I hope you're paying attention, but I, even though I'm asking the question of Sarnetta, what does this, uh, uh, what the, uh, uh, is highlighted here about this book at the very bottom, y'all? The title of the book, We, We, the Black Jews, oh. Witness to the white Jewish myth, Brother Reggie, you and everybody else. All right, ask you a question, brother. I am. The white Jewish race myth, volumes one and two. Now, this is what this is what the book said, uh, book, the book is about. Dr. Ben destroys the myth of a white Jewish race and the bigotry that has been denied, that has denied the existence of an African Jewish culture he, Dr. Ben, he establishes the legitimacy of contemporary, not ancient, contemporary black Jewish culture in Africa and the diaspora. And the Americas is part of the diaspora. All right. What's your question now, so brother? My question, son, that is, who should we believe, son, that is, should we believe Dr. Ben or should we believe Chris Harris? I'm not in the debate, brother. Oh, Who, what's, your, what's your question, answer brother? Question. No, no, no. Answer the question, bro. Brother, I'm going to move on, man. I'm going to move on, brother. Because no, no, I'm not no, no, trying no. to influence no. nobody in the debate, brother. That's oh, okay. not my well, job, ask, brother. Okay, well, let me ask Chris. Chris, should we believe you, Chris, or should we believe Dr. Ben? I don't want to talk to you. Good. Let's move on, Sonny. All right. My last question. My last no question. more questions. Oh, I don't want to talk to you. No more questions, but I got a right to ask questions. What the hell's wrong with you? 
I'm yeah. asking questions. Are you asking um y'all yeah, write a question? I'm, no, I'm asking Chris another question. He, he got it right now. I'm not answering any more of your questions. Ain't that what you do when you live? Uh, can we move on? All right, we gotta move on, Black Jesus. You wanna move on? We don't wanna answer your question, brother. Bro, okay, so you mean tell me I gave this nigga 10 minutes. I don't wanna talk to you anymore. All right, we gotta move on. Thank you, Black Jesus. Reggie, you're up in the queue. Thank you. can I ask Chris a question? This is big bro, Mikael. Yeah, I'm coming right down the line. You right after him. You right after him. Um, Brother Reggie, you on the call, and then we got Mikhail behind you. Okay, great. Um, it's a pleasure to be amongst all of you and to listen to this debate. Um, I really have just basically um, two questions. Uh, the first question is to both people. What source can you show that estimates the amount of Hebrews, Israelites, or Jews that were enslaved and you're asking this to in who? the Atlantic slave trade. Both of them. Can All you right. point to a source that would give an estimate of the amount of Hebrews? or Jews or Israelites captured and enslaved during the Atlantic slave ship. Is right. there a source? Yeah, okay. Ron, let's get it. Uh, well, here's the issue with that, right? Um, he's asking for a specific number. We'd have very few specific numbers on specific groups of people, whole tribes. Here's the thing with the Israelites, right, and the Hebrews in the west coast of Africa. They were amalgamated among many different among many different tribes. So you had the tribe of Dan among the Yoruba people. You had them among the Seneke people. You had different classes of people. And so we have sources of, the, of these, especially about, uh, even like the Igbo. We know the Igbo were not all Israelites or Hebrews. They're different classes, right? Some claim uh, different backgrounds. So to give a number on a specificity of Jews, we can't do that because we know even on the slave logs and the slave ships, the trade and everything, we know a lot of the names will change. All of the names will change. Do you, have a, do you have they, a source? Do you have a source? Different things else. Anything. So there's no actual source for that specifically okay. that it gives an actual number. Dr. All right. Mornici. All right, Chris, you got the floor, Chris. Yeah, there ain't no source. Hey, one last thing. Um, if y'all yell out, I'm going to have to kick you and boot you out the chat, man, because this ain't going to be messed up. No, we ain't going to mess up this um great debate that just went down. Chris, you got the floor, brother. Go ahead. Yeah. um, You know what? I I, I grew a little tired right now, Sonnetter, and I'm just going to be honest with you here. Um, um, No, there is no source. Reggie knows it. Yara knows it. That's why he gave that long, drawn-out answer. There is no source where you can estimate how many Hebrews came over here on those boats. But there are sources that estimate how many Africans came over here on those boats. Mm. And we do continuously give our oppression and our Holocaust to a damn God in the sky. You are, in fact, you are, in fact, one more time, let me say this. You are, in fact, letting the European off the hook. The Jews don't do it with Hitler, and I'm not going to do it with that European. God did not sit up there and allow some European to come enslave and enslave you. You are giving them a divine nature.